Welcome back, everybody, to DRL TV. My name is Ryan Branch. I'm joined by Martin Wenzel in the booth tonight. This is the Molnar Automotive Cup Series with Dynasty Racing League. It's the Great Lakes Forest Products Incorporated 200. This is a 200-mile race at Pocono Raceway in Long Pong, Pennsylvania. Two-and-a-half-mile track. Uh, we're going to run 80 laps around here tonight. Currently 82 degrees, 72% 70, yeah, 72 humidity. 
Um, some some updates came to iRacing today, so we actually have the the dynamic weather showing up and things like that. Um, these things have been changing in the past with iRacing. They just haven't displayed as such, so um, we will actually be able to see the weather changing and things like that tonight on the track. Get to see what these cars are actually doing down here. Uh, Martin, how are we doing tonight? You ready for Pocono, man? Yeah, I am. Uh, this is a fun track. I, I had a lot of fun doing this uh, track in the cup cars. Not as much fun last night in the Grand National cars or even in the trucks, but uh, these uh, cup cars are fun on the track. I, I don't know how much the cup cars have changed with this new build that just came out today and how much the track has changed. So we'll see going forward here, but it's... Yeah, I think the, the cup cars are definitely the best on this track. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is a kind of a, a different track. Uh, it's called the Tricky Triangle. These corners are flat. They're actual corners. You pick up a ton of speed going down the straightaways here. There's only three corners rather than four. Um, and you actually have to break and stuff. You know, you have to take them like a real corner. They're not those big sweeping corners like we see at a Talladega, which kind of looks like a triangle with that trioval that it has. So... Um, definitely a different beast in itself. Nothing like we've raced in yet this, this season, that's for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, like, turn one, you really got to get down and make sure you don't, uh, because that, you'll, you're going through turn one, you're going to coast up into that outside wall. Turn two, you hit there, now they have cones there. I think they used to have, like, numbers or something, but now they have, like, a one cone. And if you dive down, you just kind of, I think in the cup cars, you can just let off the gas, maybe apply a little break, and then once you get back on the gas, you're fine usually out of turn two. And then turn three is another one where you really want to hug that inside yellow line so you don't smack the wall coming out. Yeah, those corners sneak up on you real quick on the exit. It looks like we got Eric Wolf once again is on our pole. Still, that, that win has eluded him yet this season. Let's go and grab Eric Wolf. We're going to get a quick interview with him. Eric Wolf, you got a copy, sir? Yeah, I got you. Hey, man, uh, another pole position tonight. Uh, are we going after that elusive win that you just can't seem to, to grab onto this season? Oh, uh, man, I hope so. Uh, not sure how this long run is going to go, but I'm going to try to stay out front, and hopefully it's like the NASCAR Pocono race where the leader controls the race for yeah. my sake. Yeah, hey, I know they made a few changes uh, here today. How's the cup car feeling out there? Are you comfortable around Pocono? or? Yeah, it's actually faster, and the car feels more stable on the edge. Uh, I, I like the changes. The car feels it's more fun to drive to me. Well, if there's one guy uh, in here who can drive the car on the edge, it's you, man. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, go out there and get a win tonight. All right, thanks. We'll try to put on a good show. Yeah, starting second, we have a brand new driver, Alec Martinez, in the 92. Yeah, in, Alec in Martinez, motorsport. first race here with the Dynasty Racing League, sits in the second. We got Wade Houston, a familiar face there in third. Jordan Gonzalez qualifies fourth. Awesome qualifying spot for him. Sean Hughes takes fifth. Eli Hinton, another new driver to the Dynasty Racing League, is sixth. Jonathan Schwartz, seventh. Matthew George sits in eighth. Mike Springer occupies the ninth position. Eric Johnson in tenth. We got Joseph Helt. Back another week. He's in 11th right now. John Theodore, 12th position. Jeffrey Meyer sits in 13th. Daniel Hallis with a decent starting position there in 14th. Chris Stouffer in 15th. First race back with a DRL here after a little while. Mark Johnson in 16th. Brandon Dalton, 17th. Chris James sits in the 18th position. We've got Justin Levine in 19th. Jim Westerfield in 20th. Cy Jackson sits 21st in the 71. Daniel Holloway in the 26th sits in 22nd place. Joshua Wigfield starts 23rd. Christopher Polk 24th. James Pandolf, the owner of the league, sits in 25th. Thomas Harmon from S2R, 26th. David Wellborn in 27th. Sam Niederhelm, another S2R driver out there in 28th. David Wright sits 29th. Matt Kleinschmidt, 30th. And these last couple guys, I don't know if they just didn't post qualifying times. we got Caden Honeycutt there and P.J. O'Leary. They may or may not be racing. Uh, they will serve uh, if PJ they... they P.J. O'Leary is racing. Is he? Yeah, if, if he, he will serve a black flag penalty at the beginning of this race for not posting a qualifying time. And we're going to go green here. Eric Wolf off to a nice quick jump. Yeah, and here's the test. Turn, turn one's always the test here at Pocono. See if people can avoid just going four or five wide and wrecking out right away. We already got Wade Hustad there in the 32 to the inside of Alec Martinez. He's going to take that spot. It looks like pretty easily so long as he can get up in front of him there. 
good pass by him. Jordan Gonzalez is now falling him back to fifth already. Going to take a couple minutes for this thing to uh, to even out here, Martin. Yeah, but last night in Grand National, they went pretty. Ooh, Ooh Sean Hughes got into the, the rear back end. Of... That's going to kind of, according to effect, Sean Schwartz gets in the back of 15 then. Yeah, Schwartz got into the back. looked like he moved three. to the outside. Uh, John Theodore started to move up there on the inside. The 30 almost got into that. So one little mistake there almost bunches up uh, half the field. I'm just looking at some information about this track. It's 2.5 miles. And because of the unique characteristics with the turns and everything, it's been considered, been called a roval, even though that definition is going to change a little bit once you add Charlotte in there. Oh, it's definitely going to change once that Charlotte course comes around. But again, it, these corners like are, the corners are like real corners. I mean, you don't, those big banking, sweeping corners that you see at somewhere like Talladega, you can't just you know, haul butt in, in fourth gear all the way around these corners. You gotta take it easy, you gotta slow down, yep. you gotta hit your marks just as if you were running on a small track, but you're you're starting to slow up from, you know, 200 miles per hour because you pick up some speed on those straightaways. Yeah, and that's the issue is, it's, it's not so much slowing up, that's the issue, it's the issue worrying about the guy behind you slowing up at the right point too, because that's where a lot of the issues always come in. Well, it's, well, anyway, we're going to be going in. Oh, yeah, you go. <laughs> it's, it's not always necessarily the guy behind's fault, right? Because he doesn't know when you're going to break, and maybe he thinks you're yeah. not breaking at the right time. You see Theodore there getting in the break late. He heads up to the outside wall, rubs against it just a bit, falls back behind Eric Johnson. So we have uh, Joseph Helt and Eric Johnson gaining position on that mistake. Well, we're going into turn two. Turn two is based on, is like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, nine-degree banking. And we just add Indy with the Indy uh, 250 in the Indy cars. Which yep. is a very successful broadcast. Yeah, fortunately for DRL. those Indy cars, uh, first broadcast of the DRL, those things have a little more more traction. Um, you know, you can kind of just stick them in the corner and steer the car around it for the most part. Yeah, you have to hit that line and get right down on the yellow, but uh, these things tend to plow just a little bit more than that. But based off our pre-race interview with Eric Wolf, apparently handling is a little easier in this new package that they added today. Well, I'd say turn two is of the three turns probably the easiest. As long as you as long as you hit your mark, it's not you're not going to push up as hard as turn one and turn three. Turn one and turn three, if you you get back on the gas just a little too early, you're you're going into the wall for sure. And you guys can see with the camera angle here, the gap that Eric Wolf has put on these guys almost has a one second lead over second place of Wade Hustad in the 32, who also has about half of a second lead over the 23 and Eli Hinton behind him. And Wolf going into turn three, turn three modeled on the Milwaukee Mile six, six degree banking. We've been at the Milwaukee Mile in the trucks this year. Sean Hughes right in front of Jonathan Schwartz. They're on each other. You know, Schwartz is right on his bumper. Now Schwartz is on the bumper of Alec oh, no. Martinez Alec Hinton, there. Alec Martinez. Yeah, yeah they're in the 92. So Martinez the with a great starting one. position is back to sixth place already with Jonathan Schwartz to the inside of him. Same with Jordan Gonzalez, started in fourth, back to seventh now. So uh, some of these familiar faces have moved up through the field. We've seen Sean Hughes the last couple weeks done very well in the number 15. He sits in fourth position, but Eli Hinton, a new driver here at the Dynasty Racing League. I'm going to pull up his driver information. He started in sixth. He currently sits third. He has an I rating of 43-21. So awesome to see some new faces here in the DRL, even if we're halfway through the season at this point, Martin. Uh, it's still nice to see these guys turning out and showing up to some races and getting some experience here in the league, getting to know everybody else that's in the league and how they drive around you and things like that, even if you might not be competing for a championship at this point. Yeah, for Alec, for Alec Martinez and Eli Hinton, they're not going to be able to get into the playoffs, but they'll definitely be able to put out a showing, and going to next season we'll know what they're all about and how well they're going to be competing. Right now, Eli Hinton running third place looks like a guy that could definitely be a playoff driver Gordon Gonzalez oh. currently sits in seventh position he started up there in fourth uh, I rating 1348 one of our lesser experienced guys here in the cup car he's only available to race on Tuesday nights, so this is the car that he does race in um, maybe not as comfortable as he'd like to be, but I know he does like running in these cars, and he's put together some good races, Martin. He just seems to 
make one or two small mental errors throughout a race and, and you know sometimes he just gives it away after after racing really well all night as we see him get into the corner there um, out of turn three so another small mental error Nelt's gonna or Helt is gonna move to the inside of him and Eric Johnson's right on his bumper now well of the three vehicles we're running this week at Pocono or we're only running to the B car the Grand National car but trucks are running there in the official races and of those three I think the most comfortable is the cup car that, that's the one where you're not going to lose a ton of speed and stuff I mean I remember the trucks and even the last night in the Grand National car there are times you'll be running 10 15 laps on the run and you just are just falling back you just cannot get it right can't get it right and then suddenly it might come in once other people's tires start burning out yeah, right now that's so some of these guys that are falling back right now, it's like they just have to be patient. It, it, the car will come in. They'll get it, especially as other people's tires wear out. Maybe they're not as comfortable in those later parts of the runs. So we'll see cars bouncing back and forth here. And a lot of that has to do with just the handling. I mean, technically, the truck car or the truck is easier to handle through these corners, yeah, right? Yeah. But what that means is that uh, sometimes you're going to have a little too much gas in it, which you need to do, right? You need to you need to put as much gas into it as possible, get out of the gas at the right time, right back into the gas as soon as possible. But that also increases your chances of plowing that wall on the exit of the corner. So. Uh, these cup cars, tremendous amount of horsepower, and even if you have to let off for an extra second or two on the way out of the corner, mm -hmm. uh, you pick the speed right back up you know, really quickly. You're not going to lose a second going down a straight like you can in the trucks. So. Well, that's another thing, too, is that like in the Grand National car, the race last night, early on, I was just going fourth gear all the way around. And then as we got about halfway through the run, about 20 laps in, I started downshifting to third, and then just plow, just hitting that gas coming out of the corners, and that really, really helped, especially as other people's tires wore out, and I was able to gain a lot of those positions back that I had lost early in the run. So I'm sure a lot of these guys are doing that too. There's going to be a little bit of a downshifting in the corners, and then. Yeah, if that is the case, I would love perspective yeah. from a couple of the drivers. The 19 to the inside of the 68 of Thomas Harmon. Harmon has made up. Uh, seven positions already since the start of this race, but now the 19's passed him, and Cy Jackson looks to the inside as well. So Harmon not feeling so comfortable here at Pocono. He's been great since he's been back here in the Cup Series. Um, did post a sl slow qualifying time. I don't know if that's because of uncomfortability with the track or if maybe uh, he rubbed the wall on his first lap and had to take a slow lap the second time around to ensure he didn't serve that black flag penalty. So we'll see how... Uh, Harmon develops throughout the night as we're not used to seeing him back there in 20th position. Well, you just mentioned the qualifying and how I think going forward there's been discussions about not penalizing people with that black flag if they attempt a qualifying lap and they do end up rubbing the wall or something because race control can monitor that, can watch people and check to make sure they actually were trying to run a lap and weren't just trying to start in the back by not even posting anything. So. Right. I if think going forward, up I think, and let race control know, hey, I did yeah. attempt, I just rubbed the wall, so please don't black flag me. So I think in PJ O'Leary's case is that he just wasn't able to get out on there to, it sounds like he wasn't able to get out there to run a lap. You know, similar to guys in real life, how they're just not able to get through inspection or whatever on time to put in much practice or qualifying. Well, here's and something so, you don't see every day. Wade Hustad, we're used to seeing him run away from people. Eli Hinton doing a very good job of keeping up with Hustad. Eric Wolf, on the other hand, uh, I think he is going for that elusive victory tonight, <laughs> Martin. One point over a yeah. 1.5 to one and three quarter second gap on Wade Hustad already. Only 11 laps into this race, so um, I'd say 11 laps, Martin. But that's you know we're talking 30 miles on these cars already. You know. Um, how, how many laps do you think these guys go on a, on a green flag run here before they got to come in and get tires or fuel? Fuel fuel is about 40, 45, and that's about probably where they're going to come in for tires as well. Last night in the Grand National, that was the green flag stop started about around lap 40, and then a yellow flag came out in the middle of those green flag stops. So it was around there. So it's all, I think, again, it, it depends. I mean, if Eric Wolf decides to go in early at, like, lap 30, I think that's when everyone – it's going to be when that first guy goes in, everyone else is going to go in because you don't want to lose too much time with a guy on fresh tires. But it they can go about 40 laps for sure on gas and tires.
We've got a big, wide, swooping camera angle here trying to capture all two and a half miles of Pocono Raceway. This is a big racetrack, Martin. Uh, I mean, with a track this big, how can it be, you know, difficult to drive on? I mean, it's big, it's, it's a long track, it's wide. Well, the difficulty is the corners. It's the corners because you're going, you got such long straightaways, at least the front stretch and the stretch between one and two. That one between two and three is really short, actually, by comparison. And so you get you get out of turn two, and suddenly you know you get a little speed, and then you're right back on the brake and thinking about going through that Milwaukee mile turn. So yeah, you get a, I yeah. I mean, looking at I'm watching Eric Johnson. He gets up to 204 miles per hour before he hits that brake going into turn one. So that's how fast you can get. We don't get that fast at Daytona. I mean, you barely get that fast at Daytona in the draft and there is a little bit of a draft of these cars here too yeah but but you're getting again, incredible you speed apply braking when you're going into corners so not quite the yeah. same it's impressive that yeah, they so get up to that speed in just mm -hmm. on a straightaway like that i mean what are they racing drag cars or, or stock cars <laughs> <laughs> well and that's the difference right there i think that's what that's why there are a lot of yellow especially during official races i mean we again dynasty racing league separates itself where it's a lot of green flag runs. Grand National, we had four cautions, and two of those were little ticky-tack things that were just little mistakes. Otherwise, I think that thing could have gone pretty much green the whole way. And here, I think they're they're showing they can do the same thing. Yeah, Chris Stouffer's back after a little hiatus, Martin. I don't know if you're aware of why he was gone. I don't know why he was missing there for a while. Uh, was, you know, quite good, contended in every Dynasty Racing League race uh, for most of the Winter Series, and he was here for the early part of this series, and um, he's been MIA for a little while, so good to see him back there in the 07. Apparently runs in yeah, 17th. It's little, yeah, it's a little disappointing seeing some of those guys that, you know, were here last year or are guys that you think are good contenders and then they just they just aren't able to show up every week and actually race consistently and that hurts their chance to make the playoffs i mean he made the playoffs last year but this year i don't think he'll be eligible just based on how many races you have to run well, we're now focused here on the number 58 of jonathan schwartz we're going to go down and look at the point standings uh Jonathan Schwartz, you see him sitting there in the 13th position, has three wins under his belt, and those three wins have come in just the last few weeks. Uh, he's been put on phenomenal performance track after track here lately. Currently sits in the fifth position. We'll see if he has what it takes to move up through this field. Uh, Wade Hustad, who runs second right now, he sits in first place in the point standings overall with only one win under his belt, but consistent top three guy. Always running up there in the top three, top five. Anthony Burroughs, the winningest driver of Dynasty Racing in Dynasty Racing League history, actually uh, dominated last year's Cup Series. Uh, was barely edged out by Eric Wolf, who currently runs first in this race uh, at the end of last year. But Anthony Burroughs still, uh, you know, a clear favorite here to win this Cup Series. Uh, Eric Johnson sits in third, 51 points back, so he needs to finish well tonight. We see him currently sitting in eighth. Mike Springer, he sits in the 10th position. He's fourth in point standings. Uh, yeah, they, they flipped. Those two guys, they flipped. Yeah, Eric Johnson slipped ahead of him last race in yep. the point standings. And we got uh, uh, Brandon Dalton currently sits in fifth. And then the big story for this week, after some on-track happenings last week in, in uh, where were we at last week? What am I? Uh, yeah, uh, Charlotte, yeah. Yeah, last week right? at Charlotte, there were some issues down on the track with race control, and then another issue right after uh, we cut the broadcast off last week. A lot of people missed it, but uh, Chad Presnall actually intentionally running his car into another driver, so uh, the the competition committee here at Dynasty Racing League decided to suspend Chad Presnall for this race, so he is actually not participating tonight. He should be back next week. He sits in sixth in the point standing, so yeah, but he does have that, that one win. Oh, right, he's, he's got the win. The he's kind of in the playoffs so long as he shows up to the right number of races, but that's also going to limit the number of races he can miss going forward, so if there's a week he's yep. got something to do with the family, it might <laughs> you might say, hey guys, i got to go home and race or I'm not going to make it in the playoffs. <laughs> Um, so mental error by him, um, very apologetic. I think he was after, you know, all of those happenings, but that just goes to show, I mean, these guys get heated down here on the track. It's, you know, you're, you're racing 200 Ooh. miles an hour around these other guys, little stuff. I'm watching Jeffrey, Jeffrey Meyer. He got, he came up right on the rear of, uh, Matthew George and Daniel Hallis, and he had to slip all the way outside coming out of that turn one 
or he slipped into the inside, into the apron almost, and lost about three or four positions on that, but avoided does, the wreck. He falls <laughs> back here. He's now behind Thomas Harmon there in the 68, that beautiful Avril Lavigne car that he likes to run. Well, that's the, that's the thing of this track is that almost almost an instant. It can go from two wide to three to four to five wide, especially in that turn one. That's where you'll see some crazy stuff happening. Coming out of turn one, some guys will try to force it. And that happened at the end of, uh, I think, the NIS race I completed. You know, we were running two, and then it kind of got three, almost three wide. And then a guy, I tried to stick his nose in and make it four wide. Here you go. You got almost three wide there with Thomas Harmon. It's a little squirrely. Falls back. Yeah, trying to head to the inside there. Chris Stouffer, Jeffrey Myers back around him now. So Meyer looks to be getting those positions back. Um, we got Matthew George there, and the number 30 is falling back now. Daniel Hallis kind of ran off. He's catching up to the 85 of Brandon Dalton now. So For oh, being man. such a big track, yeah, for being such a big track, there still is a lot of side-by-side -side racing. It very much does have a feel like, I mean, it's not the same thing as Daytona or Talladega, but you do have a lot of close racing throughout the race despite it being such a big track most tracks it gets single file and just kind of gets spread out and people just turning laps here i mean almost the whole race you're going to see cars side by side going into these turns talking about side by side eli hinton still right on the back of wade houston i mean these guys have been racing for 19 laps around a two and a half mile and out or two and a half mile track doing 205 miles per hour on these straightaways and they're still within a quarter second of one another i mean we got we, I think we need to go back and look at that and watch Jeffrey Meyer and that that pack back there because that's where all the action is going on. It's gonna something's gonna happen. I mean, Chris Pope is pulling in here. Justin Levine, they are all over each other's bumpers, nudging and bumping through turn one. It was it was pretty dicey there for a moment. Yeah, Chris Pope having very good luck last night in that Grand National Series. He took the win there. We'll see what yes, he's he got did. here tonight. Sits so in 19th right now. Um, I know he's kind of an aggressive driver, Martin. He feels like if he can pass you, he's going to pass you. He's just going to go for it. He's not going to wait for you to get out of his way. So we'll see what happens. I mean, if Meyer can't get up to Stouffer and Harmon and get around him here, you might see Pope try to go around all three kind of at the same time. Well, sometimes it's not just sheer aggressiveness of a guy, you know, passing, especially turn one. It's just that they got more speed coming out of the turn, and if you're slow, and they slow. I, this happened to me a couple of times where it's like I get behind a guy that was slow. I'd have to slow down, and I'm losing. I'm losing five positions, and I'm I'm out. There goes the momentum, and it's because the guy in front of me was slow. Yeah, there's nothing you can do over. about it. People <laughs> kind of just drive a train around yep. you. You get stuck on that high line, or yeah, you know, stuck where stuck. you don't want to be. That's it. You're out there. I mean, they're gonna go right and around that's you, one after another, and nobody's gonna let you down. And that's why we're seeing, that's why I mean, there's so much movement. I mean, the standings are not very, they don't stay in one place every lap here because, you know, one car checks up slightly. I mean, it's not a, It's not like they hit the brake or anything. So they just don't get on the gas at the same time. Suddenly that inside line or the outside line just blows past and there's five positions you've lost and it just keeps going back and forth. Yeah, Matthew George there in the 30 who made that mental error earlier, he's now right back on the bumper of the 19, so... Uh, Levine's got to stay in the gas, but again, if Christopher Pope slows up in the least in front of him, you know, that's a free pass for the 30th George. Well, and coming out of that turn, you just saw Mark Johnson almost got into the back of P.J. O'Leary. I think O'Leary is still a lap, uh, lap down. Yep, he's still a lap down, so he's getting passed by everyone here. But yeah, if you're off the pace at all, that guy behind you is going to catch you really fast coming out of the turn. As we are 22 in out of 80, we're going to go to a quick commercial break here at the Dynasty Racing League, and we will be back hopefully to get ready for some green flag pit stops here soon, Mark. See yep. you guys in just a minute.
miss anything. Welcome more. back here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Trading Paints is kind of still updating here. We got a couple white cars on the track, but you'll see we are on a replay. A caution flag did come out immediately after heading to break. We had Chris Stouffer here. We're going to go see him get loose. Running right in front of Jeffrey Meyer here in the number 50 car. Takes that big, wide, swooping dive into the corner there. Back into the gas as soon as he hits the apex. And the car just starts to go out from under him, rubs against the wall, and right to the inside wall as well. Everybody else avoids the 07 of Stouffer, but he does take the front bumper right off of that Hooters car. Uh, looks like he is probably done for the night after that one, Martin. If anything, he'll get back out and run a couple laps in about 20 minutes. But that was a hard wreck. Yeah, I mean, this is a track where you can get some damage and get back out there and get it fixed during that yellow flag, but that's a lot of damage. I think he's he's going to be down quite a few laps before he be, he's able to get out with a decent enough car. All right, let's see what's going down on pit lane yeah, we're gonna here. we're going to watch the end of pit road. Who's coming out? Let's see. Whoa, it's what happened to Eric? Eric? Oh, Wade Hustad and Hinton right on top of each other. They Eric Wolf with we... a 17.02 there on pit row. Wade yeah, Hustad Wolf with a quick 14.23. Uh, looks like maybe either Wolf had a trouble getting into the box, or I'm going to go back and watch that. We, I got to yeah, see, gotta see that what was, happened to Wolf. Yeah, I was looking at it. Well, let's see. Let's see Wolf pulling into his box here. Now he gets yep. right in, stops instantly, and it looks like they just had the car up in the air for a little while uh, longer. Martin maybe getting a, a tad bit of repairs there that, that he needed. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I don't recall him hitting anything at any point, so I mean, he was pretty much out in front the whole way, so it wasn't like he was banging or bumping anyone. Let's go so that's kind of strange. Uh, let's grab Eric Wolf. Pull him in here real quick. Eric Wolf, you got a copy. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, man, uh, Ryan up in the booth. I just wanted to check with you. Did you stop and get a little extra repairs there on that pit stop, or is that something new they might have added today? I mean, we got dynamic pit stops out there or what? I don't know. It was a pretty awful pit stop, though. I hit my marks well. Didn't have any damage. I'm not sure what the excuse is for such a long pit stop. Wow, 17 seconds spent in the pit box. Uh, moves you back into the fifth position, man. I'm sure you'll get it back. You were putting a gap on them. Not going to be easy running out there without that clean air you had before, but... Um, Go get him, buddy. All right, thanks. Can try to stay out of trouble here. See if we can slowly work our way back up there. Yes, sir. I'm sure you will. Yeah, so maybe that's something that was put in today, Martin. If so, that's actually exciting. I mean, you got guys pulling out with a 14-second pit stop. And Eric Wolf, who, again, like he just said, no damage, pulled into his stop, you know, into his stall just fine. Yeah, maybe got out of his stall just fine, and he's sitting at a 17-second pit stop. So caught the pit crew sleeping a little bit there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, and right now, race control is having a ton of work because he has to clear a lot of black flags because the... We, I, I didn't get to mention this early on, but there is a new... You can see as we're coming past the cone here. There's, see that blue cone? Yep. That's oh, where you actually have to, to go. You have yeah, to you stay under that yellow line. Track until past yeah. that blue cone. And the problem is, is that coming out of pit road, there is no yellow line. And if you are above it, just as you get to that corner and you get to that yellow line, if your right side tires hit that yellow line at all at it any point, black flag. Black flag. Yeah. And so race control, I mean, it, it's, that's not how it is in real life at Pocono either. Well, Pocono, it makes even sense. if it you was, right none of there. the guys are used to it at this point. I mean, they just put yeah, it exactly. in. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely race control is going to want to clear all those black flags, help these guys yeah. out. And, let them preserve their positions well, here for something so, like that, that. It's so strict. It's so strict, and it's like, okay, you know, race control has said, follow the, you know, follow the rule. You have to go out, you know, follow that, stay below that yellow line. The problem is, if you just you nick that yellow line at all at any point, black instant black flag. It's like not even going over, not even, you know, cutting it or anything. It's just you kind of rub it, you know, because it's very narrow too. And usually that black flag comes out when you're entering it. That's where the trouble is, is that you just you nick it when you're coming into it because you're just a little out because there is no guide coming from the pit lane to that entrance point. Right, so. you're kind of just eyeballing it and trying to stay on the apron. And sometimes, uh, you know, the colors of that concrete just blends together a little <laughs> bit. You can't tell what's the apron and what isn't. So, um, Martin, 
We're, I'm going to let you take us to the green flag here. Looks like these guys are going to double up and go get too wide. Uh, we're going to come around and collect the green flag. I know we've said it in the past. Cautions breed cautions, Martin. On this restart, we got to hope these guys can keep it clean again, get another nice long green flag run. Um, and this time, you know, this is probably close to the last opportunity we're going to have for them to to make a green flag pit stop is, is at this point. Um, I mean, if they put another 20 laps on the tires before the next caution comes out, if another caution comes out, then we won't have a green flag pit stop the whole way through this race. I mean, only 80 laps here at Pocono. Yeah, I think, you know, I think they can, I think we will see green flag, a green flag run that will allow green flag stops. You know, but at this point now, they're, yeah, they're going to be able to divide this race into probably thirds. Because you're not going to get to 40, you know. What happened to Jonathan Schwartz down there? He just came back in the pit stop or in the pits. Alec Martinez just came back in the pits. So those guys sitting 28th and 29th now. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, Chris Stouffer, you see him there still in the pits at 400 seconds. Like I said, his race is likely over I, at this point. But. I'm not sure because they did get black flags, but those black flags were cleared. So yeah, maybe he got caught speeding on pit road or something to that that tune so i'm gonna let you take us back to the green here martin we're focused on eli hinton there in second place starts just behind wade hustad in first so eric wolf's got some catching up to do guys we're about to go racing back at pocono yeah this is it this is gonna be a lot of trouble with that new pit pit exit rule Especially here at Pocono, I think it's I think it's going to work well at other tracks at normal ovals, but here it just it's a very ridiculous place. But wait, Houston will take the green flag, gets a nice launch, already a decent gap. Sean Hughes right on the rear of Hinton, and Joseph Helt on the inside going into turn one. Eric Johnson right in front of Eric Wolf. Wolf back in the sixth now. Brandon Dalton right behind them. Wolf coming out of the turn goes the outside. Yeah, a lot of discussion over those black flags, and I don't know what what caused uh, Alec Martinez and you know a couple of those guys to fall back because of them. It sounds like there might have been something with the with PJ O'Leary and that they passed him. Ooh, Eric Johnson and Eric Wolf. Eric Johnson is all over the bumper of Eric Wolf. Martin, one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet is uh, the early parts of these green flag runs is kind of when everything is going to happen. That's uh, so, you know, so much of your race is dependent on the early parts of these green flag runs because, you know, towards the end of the green flag runs, more laps on the tires, times start to even up a little bit with the exception of probably the top five to six, seven drivers uh, who are just really, really special at driving the car on the edge, like Eric Wolf put it prior to the race starting. Uh, well, I think there, there's going to be some guys that are just going to be better late in the run. They can run on those older tires, and that's where they can gain positions. As Hinton rolls into first place out of turn one. Yeah, it gets ahead Eli of Hinton is dead. first DRL race. He is now out there with some clean air, and he's already put a gap between him and the 32. Houston must have had a horrible corner there. And yeah, Joseph Helton third, Sean Hughes fourth, and Eric Wolf. Eric Wolf finally getting away from Eric Johnson. Johnson was all over his bumper a couple laps ago. So in the top five, with the exception of Hustad and Wolf, I mean, three very new drivers to Dynasty Racing League. 23 in his very first race back, representing that beautiful number 23 that I drive in the truck series. So who a 23 out there? Eli Hinton is, is taking this thing to the house. I mean, already a half a second gap over with Hustad second. Yeah, I still haven't gotten any clarification on what the black flag issues were. It wasn't just black flags for that the pit exit, but there was also, I guess, because Jonathan Schwartz actually got black flag for the pit exit, and then he got another, him and 
some of those guys, uh, Alec Martinez, some of those guys that got that second black flag, and I guess that was for passing the 80 or something going on with P.J. O'Leary. Huh. So I don't know what happened there because I'm sure P.J. O'Leary was the lucky dog. I mean, he is on the lead lap now, so I don't know what happened there, what the issue was. Well, Jonathan Schwartz in the 58 uh, and Alec Martinez in the 92 started 27th and 28th, respectively. They're up to 23rd and 24th already, so already put a few positions or gained a few positions. Uh, they're just going to need, you know, one more caution, really, to get themselves back into this thing, Mark. Yeah, they just have to work their way back. The unfortunate set of circumstances. Oh, we I got a bunch of guys was. going down Ooh. into the low side of that front straightaway there. 58 of Schwartz was one of them. Yeah. Well, they're going to be fast. I mean, they qualify. I mean, Alec Martinez qualified second. Yeah, and just getting a huge run out of that corner, diving down to the inside of the car in front of them and trying to get around yeah, them on these straights. I mean, if they can carry that momentum out of the corner, that's where you gain all your mm -hmm. speed, right? You're at top speed halfway down the straight rather than just hitting your top speed at the end of the straightaway. Yeah, Schwartz hits about 197 before he has to the brakes going into the Indy turn there. The tunnel turn, as it's known, turn two. Yeah, it's just going to be a little bit more work for them, that, you know. But it's not out of the realm of possibility that we're going to see Schwartz and uh, Martinez back up there in the top five or top ten. Yeah, Schwartz right to the bumper of the four at Jim Westerfield. Looks like he's going to go for the pass on Westerfield as well. I do not, uh, or I expect to see Alec Martinez follow right behind as he also takes that inside line. Four moves out. Yeah, he'll get here. The four just has to avoid at this point uh, letting, again, a train get ran on him, let the 74 go around, and other guys to follow. So he does pull back up in line. So now Schwartz has put a gap between him and Martinez. These guys were very good in the early parts of this race. Unfortunate black flag caused what it did, but now James banned off to the inside of Martinez. So. Mm hmm. Well, just ahead of them, there's a little bit of a battle between Paul or Paul George, Matthew George, and uh, Matt Kleinschmidt, and Schwartz is going to slip in between the two of them. Yeah, now he's getting right to the back bumper of Kleinschmidt, though. Uh, Schwartz has to be very careful. There's, again, you, you kind of have to flirt with that line of being aggressive enough to get the position, but not too aggressive because, you do, again, you don't know what the guy in front of you is going to do. You see Cy Jackson there in the five guys, 71. He goes to the outside. A couple guys are going to try to go to the inside of him. He swings way up high. You, you just don't know what that car in front of you is going to do. You see Schwartz getting very close to him on the exit of that corner. So, again, Schwartz is one of those guys I mentioned early in this, in this run here who, as the tires get older, he gets better and better. Um, so things aren't going to even out. It's not going to be about keeping the car under him. It's going to be about getting positions and as many and as quickly as possible. So... Uh, a lot of these guys, once they get 10 to 12, 15 laps on the tires here at Pocono, they're just worried about not getting into the wall. Well, uh, Pocono, Pocono, it, it doesn't go, the tire wear isn't terrible. I mean, it doesn't affect the driving too much. But, you know, like we did that 40 lap run in the Grand National, and I think my tires had about 60%. But, and it wasn't like I was, oh, no, I can't control this thing. You know, obviously you have to slow it, you have to back it down a little bit more or whatever it is, but yeah, it definitely does, it does start separating people because some people are much more worried about it. Other people realize, hey, wait a second, I can actually go faster than I thought I could go because some, that's sometimes some of it too is that when you start these races, even when putting practice in, you're a little tentative, you're a little conservative on how you're driving it. Then you realize, hey, wait a second, I'm losing all these positions because I'm not driving it as fast as I can be driving it through this corner. I could actually get on the gas sooner and on the brake later than I have been doing. I've been driving too slow. I don't know if they took a wave around of some sort on that last uh, that last caution, Martin, but we had both James Pandolf and Jordan Gonzalez in the 74 and the number nine. They both came down pit road. James took a regular pit stop, 15 point some odd seconds, came right out. Jordan Gonzalez hmm. has now been in there for almost 30 seconds. So those two guys having issues down on the track. Unfortunate for Gonzalez after a pretty good starting position. Uh, he's all the way back in 30th, and it doesn't look like that position's going to improve anytime soon. Only one driver is out of this race currently. That is Chris Stouffer at the number uh, 07. He's in 31st. He's up 12 laps down. Now we have Gonzalez and Pandoff one lap down apiece, and 28 cars still on the lead lap here at Pocono. 
Okay, I just got word on what uh, the issue was with the 58 and the 92 on that last with those black flags is that they did get black flags and they were cleared because they thought they got the kind of the wrong word of what it was about, but they actually did have real black flags, so the race control gave the black flags back. One was for speeding and the other one was for an actual unsafe pit exit. Yeah, so those guys did have some trouble down there on pit road. Jordan Gonzalez pulls back out onto the track after an over two minute or over one minute pit stop there. So he's going to get back out there and continue to run some laps. I know he's praying for a big wreck to happen here. Uh, that's the thing uh, with the, as spread out as we are. Even if something goes catastrophically wrong, the most drivers it's going to collect at this point is five or six. Yeah. Well, Mark Johnson, right in front of uh, Jonathan Schwartz, really making some. Some really aggressive moves around Daniel Holloway, but it works out. And now and Jonathan Schwartz is going to move past him in turn three. Well, he's going to try. Yeah, Schwartz and doing an awesome job like up to it. 15th already oh, after starting 27th. Come on, Johnson, let him. Don't. Oh, wow. He was right on that, right on the quarter panel of uh, Schwartz. He could have turned him there, but Mark Johnson keeps, it, keeps that car off. You can see we got 24 of Eric Wolf was very patient getting through traffic. He's back up to second. He's catching up to Eli Hinton very quickly here as both of those drivers are coming up on the rear of the 74 of James Pandolf. He's looking to put him two laps down. Actually, no, that'll put him one lap down because he did get that position back after that quick pit stop. So, Yeah, I'm curious what happened to Gonzalez and Pandolf there because Jordan now down two laps. Yeah, and he took an extensive pit stop. Don't know if he needed some repairs there. Maybe rubbed the wall one too many times. But big story of the night's going to be whether Eric Wolf can get this back and whether the 23 can come out in his very first DRL race and get a victory. This it won't be the first time we've seen it. I mean, we had Thomas Harmon early in the season. Talladega, his first race back with Dynasty Racing League, he came out and snuck a victory Harmon. in there after a last lap or last corner really accident yeah, between John. the leaders. So. Yeah, Jonathan Schwartz, Jonathan Schwartz got one in one of his first few races. Mark Johnson got one pretty early on in his DRL you know, career here. So. And I, know, I think Wade Hustad, he runs here for points, but in both of his other series, I think he came out pretty quick in both the trucks and the Grand National, mm -hmm. either his first or second race, got wins in both of those series. So a lot of competition up here. Hustad's back to fifth after easily sticking with Hinton earlier in that, in that previous run. Uh, he's lost some positions. I mean, he restarted in first here on this one, and he sits fifth behind the 15 of Hughes. Helt's in front of him, sitting third, and you got Eric Wolf and Hinton up here, kind of in a league of their own. Well, if Hinton wins this race, we're going to see exactly why we have, there's, I believe we have an 80% participation requirement, and it's to prevent things like a guy like Yale uh, Hinton coming in, winning a race, and now just being locked in the playoffs without really running most, most of the season. Or much as season. I mean, he could just win. He could just come win a race today, and, and come back to in the playoffs. <laughs> and so, like, that's not what we want. And so, like, you see some of those guys towards the bottom of the standings on the standing screen because points-wise, they don't have a lot of points, but they do have that win. But they've also put in enough races. Now, a guy, you know, David Wright got that win at Daytona. Thomas Harmon got the win at was it at Talladega? I thought Mark Johnson won Talladega. I'm not sure, but you know, Mark Johnson got a win. But those guys, I think. As long as they show up, I think, for the remainder of the season, Mark Johnson and uh, I think Mark Johnson would be the only one. The rest of them have shown up most of the season. As long as they show up the rest of the rest of the season, they're locked in the playoffs with that win. Eli Hinton, we're already in – this is uh, race 14. And I think you can only miss eight, six or eight races. Yeah, Mark Johnson's going to be close to that cusp, if mm -hmm. not uh, over it already. I mean, he's 416 points back with a win. So, yes, he's in, but uh, he's probably got to show up to every single race here yeah, left in the season prior to the for, playoffs in order to get in. So, Well, and that's what it is. For some of these guys, some of these guys that are locked in, now it's becoming a participation thing. Now, a guy like Anthony Burroughs, he's got he's got a few races he, still that he can miss, but he's got to watch out for that too because even with five wins. That doesn't matter. Doesn't he's quickly enough. out of those point standings. Uh, he won't get into the playoffs yeah. if he doesn't make it to 80% of those races. So Yeah, and which that, would really be bad, which would really suck to not have your best, you know, to have your top winner, you know, at least at this point in the season, who is our top winner because Jonathan Schwartz has three wins, and I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up another two or three. We're up here talking about the point standings. Eric Wolf did slip by Eli Hinton there for first place, and he's hot on the bumper yes, of the did. 74 of Pandolf, who, <laughs> funny part being, Pandolf actually has about – 
uh, what does he have? Uh, 13 lap yeah, pressure, pressure tires, tires than, yeah. <laughs> than Eric Wolf does. And Eric Wolf still catching up to him. But again, tiny little mistake there in that corner, and Hinton's back up to Eric Wolf. So the, the littlest thing in these corners, I mean, the cars carry so much speed on the exit. And sometimes if you if you just feel the car plowing towards that wall a little bit, you got to get out of the gas, and it kills your speed down these straightaways. We see these guys here in the point standings on the cusp down there. David Wellborn Jr., Jordan Gonzalez, John Theodore. None of those three have wins in this series currently. Uh, Daniel Hallis, Chris James, and oh, Joshua Wakefield are the guys they're looking to catch. Yeah, Daniel Hallis is the one they're looking to catch, and he's got decent gap over Wellborn. Let's see, where is that? Caution. See cars all over the place. Everybody's going to slow up. They still do need to catch up to the pace car here. Uh, yeah, I'm still not seeing any... All right, I'm going to have to zoom back here and just... Oh, I just saw it. Let's see, what was that? Oh, it looks like Daniel Holloway. Something with Daniel Holloway. Yep. So, go lap 41, Daniel Holloway going into the tunnel turn, turn two. Starts getting loose. Kind of starts turning left because he's loose. I don't agree with giving an EOL for that. Race control gives an EOL for that. I don't. I thought we were going to be. Again, that was another thing that was talked about is that there was going to be less EOLs and stuff. And I, I don't like an EOL for the 92 there because uh, Holloway was loose. Holloway started turning left down into where the 92 went, and they got contact and spun him. Not a ton of damage for either car, probably. And that's that's all it was. So so far we've had two real. Almost single car incident, and then that one. We're riding you know, on that board here with Daniel Holloway off. currently <clears throat> as he gets ready to enter this corner. As soon as he pulls the wheel to the left, he must apply the brakes at the same exact time. The car starts to go a little loose. He gets it corrected, starts to go left again, and then the 92 just plows into the back left of, or yeah, back left of him. So, um, you know, nothing he can really do to avoid that. Maybe a little over-aggressive driving by the 92. But, again, there's only so much he can do. If he's turning his wheel solid left trying to yeah, get around that corner, I mean, if he hits the brakes, he's going to spin out. So he's got to use that 26 to kind of straighten himself out. He doesn't have another option. So he's going to acquire some damage there. I don't know if an EOL uh, even really matters here, Martin, because he will be in the pits for probably an extra few seconds at the very least to get some repairs. But yeah. Well, that's that's tough for him again because he already had that black flag and now he's getting that EOL. Like I like I think that's a racing incident there where it's like the 92. It's not like the 92 is overly aggressive. It's just there's nowhere for him to go. The guy in front of him. That's what I'm talking about. It's like the guy in front of you slows down. You're there. We you're go. Done, right? And Wolf in that front pit stall. He gets a normal pit stop that time around. So gets himself out of pit road in 15.03. Um, very quick time. And remember everybody down there on pit road, but. And the issue is, is that these guys all have to go into that yellow, that tiny little yellow lane there, that yellow, just below that yellow line to come out here. They can't just go right out, even though there's no traffic. There's a, I don't know why, I do not know why for Pocono that the pit exit's on the back stretch there. It doesn't make sense because you can actually exit safely on the front stretch. And I think, I think it's definitely for official races, definitely where, you know, some guys will just pop right out right away. You know, like idiots and just pull right out in front of a line of cars. Whoa, whoa, but, whoa, know. Martin. Calling complete strangers <laughs> idiots. I don't know about all of that. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Yeah, the driving's not the best in those official races, that's for sure. But iRacing in general is a company. I mean, they're always doing something to try to uh, improve the experience here. I mean, everybody obviously takes this very seriously. It's not just a game to most of the people that play it. It's a, it's a simulator, you know. It's, it's Well, it's going to get as close to real life as it gets, so... Uh, I, I think they're just trying to help as a company, try to keep things more clean for some of the less experienced, newer drivers that come to the game. And uh, Joshua Wakefield travels around, collects himself a lead lap there. Nice job by the 35, getting that bonus point, and he'll pull down pit road. I think iRacing made a uh, they, they did something brilliant, though, with that update, with the update of adding that pit lane exit, is that this pit lane exit is a pain in the butt, and I think it's going to be very, very unpopular. But no one's going to know about it until the next time the official races go to Pocono because this is the last week. Of, this is probably one of the last races of the week. Or if there are going to be any more races at Pocono in these kind of cars, 
it's going to be in leagues or hosted races. It's not going to be in official races because the, the the week's already over. Yeah, we just so, so happen no to one's going to realize Tuesday after the official week. Yeah. So uh, that well, no one's going to realize out, that. You know, yeah, hours no one's going to rerun here. <laughs> yeah, so no one's going to realize. Yeah, no one's going to realize that. Hey, Pocono's got a really crappy pit exit scheme where nearly everyone's going to get black flags. Probably that first that first official race is going to be a, a mess the next time we come to Pocono because people are going to. I, you know, the guys in this league and anyone else who runs Pocono between, you know, now and the official next time there's officials are going to have that great advantage of knowing, hey, I got to go down and stay on that under that yellow line and make sure I stay under there because everyone else is going to get black flags. And well, in I racing, is, well, they in remember a, it, you know, come this time next you know, year. And, and that's but a thing. in I racing official in I racing officials, you don't have anyone up in the sky either that can clear those black flags. So you get a black flag, even if it's erroneous, because yeah, that's you're happening. Serving it. <laughs> you're screwed. Yeah. And that that's one thing where it's like official. Uh, that's the one thing I love in DRL is that if I do get a black flag, that's like okay, what the heck is I racing doing? Why they, why did I get a black flag for doing nothing wrong? Well, you can get that cleared. The race control will clear that for you. And and that's how, get that that's how it should be. I would hope during practice yeah. sessions and things like that, between now and then, iRacing is also going to put in sort of a Miranda line. So when you're practicing and qualifying, if you pull up for that same point on the track, they're also going to give you a black flag, make you come back in and, and take a pit. So at least you're aware of where that line is at, you know, prior to getting out on the track. Oh, yeah. When come in, in practice, first, yeah, you'll learn it pretty quick. Stop, so. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think it'll work on. I think it'll work on the normal ovals. I mean, here between pit, between pit lane, the pit exit, and turn one, there is such a big area where you can get back on the track safely. And so I, it's kind of strange that the exit is on the back stretch. It really doesn't need to be on the back stretch. A place like Charlotte, a place like you know most normal ovals, if you come out of pit lane, you're entering the track right into the turn almost. And that's why they kind of like, hey, stay below the yellow line until the back stretch, then come on. So you don't just slide right up in the turn. Right. Looks like Joshua Wakefield ran out front there for that one lap to try to get repairs on the yep. following two laps. So he didn't just pull down pit road once. He pulled down twice in a row, collects five seconds of repairs the second time in. So looks like he's got the car all fixed up. Christopher Pope, who was moving through the field earlier, he's still in pit road. So he took uh, a good amount of damage there. And P.G. O'Leary has been down there in the pits for a long time at this point, too. Uh, all that being said, I mean, we still do have 27 drivers. Uh, Sai Darius Jackson currently sits in 27th place. Uh, still on the lead lap here at Pocono. So it's been a good race so far, Martin. I mean, two, two cautions. We're on lap 45 out of 80. Again, this restart's going to be big. We're going to see if these guys can stay out of each other for these first one or two laps around this track and kind of thin things out. But our leader, Eric Wolf, looks pretty dominant so far here tonight. Uh, we'll see if he can maintain that, that first position. Yeah, the Grand National race had four cautions. Uh, up until the end when Daniel Hallis decided to park his car to get his race control the last the last restart, everyone was on the lead lap on that last restart besides, the, you know, Daniel Hallis who decided to get out of the car so he could, you know, focus 100% on race controlling the last restart. He wasn't in contention anymore. But otherwise, everyone was on the lead lap. The complete opposite of what we saw on officials this week with uh, the races yeah. just going horribly. I mean, uh, you know, you only get to run what is it, how many laps was it at Pocono this week for an official race? Only like was it 60. Well, it depends on fixed or open. I think open was about the same, 60 or 80. Yeah, not a very long race. And, and I mean, well, it doesn't you're seem long. It's 80 laps, but race. it is. Oh, and right there, right away, Jeffrey Meyer gets into Daniel Hallis. Hallis with terrible luck again. Yeah, and then it that comes down in front all of the 89. Jeffrey there, Meyer. John Theodore sends him around. Uh, yeah, I think we talked last week. Jeffrey Meyer was doing fairly well last week, and uh, he's been plagued by issues uh, you know, for he the wiggled. majority of the season, and now we see it again here. We're going to go down to the cockpit of Meyer. Well, coming and out of the wall. Yeah, coming out of turn one, he got scared of that wall coming up on him, and he overcorrected and came down into Daniel Hallis, and that's going to catch. Let's see, who does that all catch? We're riding along with Meyer here. Theodore pulls down, down the Theodore. low line in front of Hallis. Yeah. Ooh, did... Meyer hits the brakes pretty hard, but oh, awesome corner by Meyer. I mean, he gets in the brakes enough to stay out of the, the 68 of Harmon. I don't know if that was Meyer's fault. I didn't even see anything there. Let's go back up and look. Uh, no, he, he and yeah, go to Chopper. You can time. clearly see that he's if he just stays straight and goes towards the wall. I mean, he 
he's fine, and then he, he just a little bit comes down to the left, and that but catches. really from inside the car, uh, I don't even think he knew. Daniel that. Hallis kind of shakes out, too. Yeah, they kind of both go, they both correct in opposite directions. So Hallis kind of corrects to the right, and Meyer corrects it slightly to the left, and they smack into each other. So I actually, don't know that's both. what Hallis was doing there. I mean, Hallis, it looked like he straight up steered right into him. Let's go back mm -hmm, down. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Cockpit view of. So you're right. That's they ended more up going Hallis. three wide, right? Because Hallis goes to the inside of Theodore. Meyer goes to the outside of Theodore here. Oh, Hallis tries to dive this corner, get himself down in there. Um, and it was all fine. It's just, I think, what right as they get to the straightaway, Hallis kind of wiggles to the right. And Meyer, much less, wiggles to the left. I blame that on Meyer, but it, it's actually Hallis does more of the damage because they were straightened out. And even if Meyer came down just slightly a little bit, they would have been fine. But they kind of... Basically, as soon as Hallis goes a little bit right, it almost is like a magnet, and they just come together. Yeah, that was definitely crazy. I, I don't, uh, you know, Meyer seemed to, from in-car cam, seemed as if he was just driving the car, just wanted to stay off the, you know, Well, that's what I'm saying. He wiggled, he wiggled slightly left, and that's what I thought it was, but it, Hallis actually comes... T yeah. turns a little bit right as well and it's kind of weird there because there was no need for him to turn right well, and again he was, he was from, locked down from chopper view it looked like both of them got into both of them maybe hallis was a oh yeah the, now. from the inside view of the car yeah. it didn't look like it was either of their fault it looked like they were both just driving the car and came together so uh -huh. racing incident yeah, there another unfortunate end to a race for the 72 yeah. of daniel hallis he can't seem to put one together as of late but uh he's hanging on to that 12 he's hanging on to that last point position <laughs> But, you know, it's all, like, John Theodore, I think John Theodore is yeah, he, going hard. Now, out. John Theodore got collected in that a little bit, and he might have a little bit of damage. Daniel Halloway got clipped a little bit. Sam Niederhelm might have gotten a little damage. Well, you could say Looked almost like that, that Theodore caused all of that. But really, it, you know, just because being in the way, he was a little slower <laughs> on the straight. One. But he didn't <laughs> cause it, right? Daniel Halloway made the move. He tried to dive to the inside. He's the one who took it three wide. Well, it, it wasn't John Theodore I don't that think, did that. But, you yeah. know what? But going three wide there is not a problem because again they came out and they're fine. It's just if you if you just lose a little bit coming out of the corner there, and that's what it was. It was just both of those drivers just corrected the when they didn't there. have to. They they I think they got a little nervous and they thought, oh no, I'm going to go, I'm going to slide up or I'm going to get loose or I'm going to whatever it was. Jeffrey Meyer goes a little left. Daniel House goes a little bit more right than Meyer went left, and they get into each other. And at first I thought that was Meyer, but it was Meyer going left a little bit, and Daniel House also going right quite a bit that caused that. And so, well, Alec Martinez, he had a great start in this race. He got moved back earlier with Jonathan Schwartz on those uh, black flags what? under that first Did he caution get caught in flag. Something? I don't know. He's now 70 seconds down there on pit road. He sits in 27th, and John John Schwartz has moved himself back up to seventh. So, awesome moving it's... there by the 58 of Jonathan Schwartz finding his way back to the top 10, but. It's so weird seeing these. I keep seeing guys coming down pit lane and having these big repairs. It's yeah. like, what, what causing that? Right. Christopher because Pope's back I know, down there, 100 seconds on pit road. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I know Martinez got that a little bit, that damage from bumping into uh, to Holloway, but it shouldn't be that much. I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe it is. I mean, maybe it's like that can be about a minute of damage, maybe. And so he's just getting it all cleared out. And it, you know what? At this point, you got 30 laps. You're going to have 30 laps to go probably when this thing restarts. You might as well get all those repairs done, and then you can actually start really beating and banging and getting back up. You know, 30 laps, I mean, we talk about it, it's like, oh, 30 laps left. And 30 laps, I mean, it's two and a half miles each yeah, lap. 30 it's laps like Pocono 30. is a long time. Yeah, this isn't, 30, this isn't 30 laps of Bristol, which will be over in 10 minutes. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> this is going to be, it's, it's still a good chunk of race. I mean, it's like, oh, it's a short race, 80 laps. Well, that's 200 miles. That's, you know. And another story here, the 15 of Sean Hughes is all the way back to 19th position. I didn't get to see what happened to him or why he got moved. Yeah, he's got a little damage, so too. Back. Uh, Eli Hilton, yeah, I heard Hinton, him. still doing very well, sits in third. Joseph Helt, a fairly new driver, only been here a couple weeks now. He sits in second. So, But uh, Eric Wolf still the man to beat, Martin. Uh, how many laps has he led tonight? Uh, I don't know. Is there a place we can see that? <laughs> I can I see it on unofficial the... <laughs> results, I think, is the only place I can see it. Yeah, he's led 32. Eli Hitton has led 11. Wade Hustad, 5. And I think uh, further down that list, you'll have... Uh, oh, no, I thought... Uh, what's his name from earlier? Got uh, to lead a lap for staying Wakefield? out there. 
Was it Wakefield? That maybe he didn't. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was out there for a lap lead, but he was just out in front of the guys and, and uh, came down pit road as they came. Yeah, maybe he never completed finish. it. Yeah, so, yeah, he never completed the lap. So yeah, I mean Eric Wolf dominating the again. You only see that number, you know, thirty-five laps led by Eric Wolf, but thirty-five laps at Pocono. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty long. You're, yeah, you're talking one hundred and twenty miles. He's led to this race, so. Well, we're just looking at we're looking at the points again, and just thinking thinking how points things right now. And Daniel Hallis looks like he's, you know, well, it looks like he's back. Oh no, he's still in the pits. But yeah, it's like he's he's hanging on to that last spot, and the guy that's right next to him is David Wellborn. We well, got guys down pit road again. Sean Hughes is down there. Sam Niederhelm, Cy Jackson, Alec Martinez is back down. Josh Wakefield comes back down pit road. So weird. Thomas Harmon is on pit road again in the 68. These guys keep making some weird late pit stops here. Cy Jackson only 4.63 seconds in there. I don't know. Maybe they was... got black flags. I don't know if maybe they decided they're not going to clear those black flags for that the pit exit. Maybe. Yeah, after I, warning the guys, you know, I guess that could be. But I would think because it was just such to... a pain. You have to serve that penalty <laughs> under green. You can't serve it under yellow. So Yeah, that too, though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> These yeah, guys just coming in for some extra tires and trying to make sure that they're as fresh as possible. I mean, all of our guys, in, you know, first oh. through 16th position have seven laps on their tires at this point. So. Well, I remember hearing, yeah, I heard Sean Hughes chime over. It's like, oh, I got a bunch of damage. And I'm like, but from what? I don't remember him being in anything. And so it's so weird because some of these guys are getting damage and getting involved in things. But it's like, when are these things happening? Because... They Interesting really little tidbit <laughs> I'd like to point out, Martin, if I pull these unofficial results back up, you guys, oh, my little symbols aren't there for some reason. Well, anyway, the very first driver uh, in a Toyota Camry is all the way back in the 12th position. we got Justin Levine back there in 12th driving a Camry, Daniel Holloway in 18th in a Toyota Camry, and the race uh, are significantly dominated by the Chevy SS here. we got two Fusions mm -hmm. there up in the front, Joseph Helt and Eli Hinton. In second and third, but our leader is also what driving the Chevy. What little symbols aren't showing up? On unofficial results, normally it shows on the right-hand side what the manufacturer is. It's, it's not there. Huh. Weird. Might have been something that fell off in, in recent times. Martin, you're our, you're our graphics guy. You're supposed to have this stuff fixed. You and Jordan, and we're going to have a talk to you after this race. I sent, I sent you all the <laughs> manufacturer logos. I don't know why they're not showing up. Yeah, I, I noticed they didn't show up in the Indy race, and I don't know if that's just because there aren't different manufacturers or if there isn't a certain manufacturer logo for that. Yeah, it might not be I know a Jordan has one them in there. Yeah, there might not be, and there might there, I, I don't even know what manufacturer they are. Bill's IR 18s. To be honest, honestly, I, I I don't keep up with the Indy series, but that was a heck of a race to watch, man. I don't know if you got to watch, uh, you know, some of oh, the. Oh yeah, the end, and I stuff, watched the end. Yeah. That was a great race. The, the Indy 250. That was a one-off event here for the DRL. There is an Indy series that runs every week. We'll see this week. It's going to depend on participation whether Getty Buckner comes back. And, broadcast that for us on thursday but if enough guys show up that's something you guys might be seeing regularly here on drl tv thanks to all of our viewers for tuning into that last thursday night uh, one of the better participation races as far as a viewer standpoint goes uh, of the entire season so far so thanks for tuning in there guys giving those guys some support in their first race on drl tv first race being broadcasted yeah i think uh if i think the oval definitely the oval indie races sound like they're going to be broadcasted more just because you get more participation in those on the driver's side. Yeah, and it's but not because people get... don't want to. It's just, a, man, those those road courses are so tough to race yeah, in a car are. that quick, man. you got to put a ton of practice in to be remotely fast at it. So Wade Hughes was trying to hold off the 58 yeah, of Jonathan Schwartz fall back there. Here. And then he catches the wall now. Yeah, he went in that gonna, corner real hard, driving in his rear view, trying to hold the 58 off and just washed up in that middle of that corner. Now Springer takes him to the inside as well. And right behind him is Brandon Dalton. Brandon Dalton just during that lap blew past Meyer and uh, John Theodore. If I'm not mistaken, right I'm going to pull up there. our point standings here. Brandon Dalton is right behind Mike Springer. In the yeah, point he's in fifth. So, um, Brandon Dalton, that guy, is just kind of quiet. I mean, we talk, we've talked about him quite a bit during the season. There's been... I think you know, we've interviewed like, oh, him once guy? or twice, but it wasn't for good stuff. It was for bad stuff. So Yeah, and it's like he's been a guy that we were like, oh, is he is he really – can he really handle his car? Can she be up in here? And he's not in fifth in points. Just yeah. quietly massing those points, finishing decently, even though we've 
you know, they're probably, you know, that's that's how it works. It's like you can, you can have a rough race here and there. It's a long season, and if you finish well other places, it'll it'll cover up those bad uh, races. So, uh, Martin, I had to, somebody pointed out to me, too, it's a possibility that uh, on one or two of these maybe, you know, pit stops where these guys came down, you know, maybe somebody was just taking two tires or something at some point. Those guys might have come back down pit road at the end of that to take a splash of fuel and make sure they can run to the end of this race. But I think the fuel lasts a good 40 laps or so here. So you never know where somebody's at in their pit strategy. Things do change, and it's going to be dependent on whether we get a caution to come out here or not. So. Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't just get the yeah get the same just get all the fuel and get the four tires on that last stop. And then... uh, some guy likes some guys like the car to be a little lighter. I mean, me myself yeah, on a track like this where you're already doing 200 plus miles per hour, I'd rather the, the tank be fuel maybe to just keep some more weight back there. But well, that's my, maybe that's the thing too is that people do like play with the fuel and that weight and. That's why they have a lot of the uh, have to figure out all that strategy because I usually take all the fuel until yeah if the, if that last stop is within the fuel window yeah I won't take fuel because then I, I might save a second there or something you know and it gives me a little bit more you know there's no point to put more fuel in if I don't need more fuel to finish the race but at and this every point every second yeah, matters right we know that mm -hmm. you know the story of this race so far the 23 here of Eli Hinton Back in third, uh, when he was out there running by himself at first with a ton of space and time, the only person that was remotely close to catching him was Eric Wolf. And now not only is Wolf running away from him, but so is Joseph Helm. So uh, Eli Hinton's kind of been <clears throat> the tale of two drivers here. Early in that first green flag run, he was trailing the 32 of Wade Hustad and losing time on Eric Wolf, and that was as good as he could do, but nobody was catching him either. And then once he got the lead, same thing. The only person that could catch him was Eric Wolf. And now, for whatever reason, Joseph Helt is uh, is burning him. It looks like the 58 well, we of Schwartz might be coming up to do the same. Yeah. Well, we've talked about this all season, just all these new, really good drivers coming up here into the Cup. I mean, almost, it seems like almost every other driver is a rookie, technically, this year in our league. And next year, yeah, next year you're going to look at those standings. There's going to be, like, maybe one or two rookies out there. And because all these guys are going to be, you know, have a year under their belt, and they're all going to be considered, you know, guys that we've seen for a lot of races. You know, and Joseph Helt, I mean, Eli Hinton, Schwartz. I mean, Schwartz and Johnson, who are guys we've seen, they're, they're still technically rookies, but they've been here, you know, they've been here for the first 13 races of the season, basically, compared to a guy like, Eli Hinton or Alec Martinez in their first race now. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I hope they continue to turn out for races. I know Hinton mm -hmm. has to be loving the DRL right now, especially after the officials this week. Uh, maybe not so much for uh, Martinez, who hasn't had the greatest night, but I don't think any of that's on the, the other drivers of the league. He's kind of just gotten himself in trouble. I mean, it all started with that black flag completely caused by his own doing early so well i think you have to look at the yeah it's like dr races you have to look at it some people i know there have been some drivers that have dropped out and they're like oh it's because i i just have no luck it's just not good for me it's like it's the I, for me it's the best race i even though i don't finish great all the time and i have some bad luck here and there it's it's nothing like the official races where it's like you're just pacing most of the time. You get on the restart and then someone smashes on into you right away on the restart. And now we're back to yellow flag again. And you know, it, here it's like it's green flags and things are going to happen. It's racing. You're going to get, you know, if you don't, if you go a whole season, you don't get wrecked and have a bad race. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Daniel Halloway, I saw him. He just piped over the radio. Getting a little excited because people passing him. He looks a little slow. Thomas Harmon going to be passing him and going into the tunnel turn. Followed by David Wright. First time. Well, we mentioned David Wright, but first time we're seeing him on the track or watching him. Yeah, uh, I mean. Well, I just, I, where is Wright? He sits in 19th position at the moment, so. I a wonder ton how of guy, yeah. position back here and all these guys. Again, I think the cars, really. We're looking at 16 laps on David Wright's tires, 16 laps on Chris James' tires. A lot of these guys have 16 to, between 10 to 16 laps, depending on when they got their last pit stop. And uh, 
the cards kind of even themselves out over time. Oh, the 68 there, Thomas Harmon to the inside of the 30 of Matthew George. Harmon is on the move. He only has nine laps on his tires. One of those guys who came in at the end there. Same thing with Sean Hughes in the number 15. Maybe, again, a little pit strategy, just freshening those tires up just a little bit more, making sure they get every lap out of it they can. And those guys are on the move, Martin. Sean Hughes, another position in front of Jeffrey Meyer. Thomas Harmon looks to uh, be catching up to the back of Meyer. He's going to go right to the inside of him as well. So... Definitely using that to their advantage. Well, I wonder what the strategy is for a guy like Thomas Harmon or David Wright, who's already got the win. They're locked in the playoffs. But it, are they able to be a little bit more relaxed? They don't have to worry about that so much. But they are still competing for wins, obviously. I mean, everyone wants to win all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's the ultimate goal, right, is to come out here and get a victory. But, again, if a track like this, we can clearly tell, just based off the last couple of weeks and what the 68 of Harmon's been able to do, he's not comfortable here. This isn't a track, you know, this isn't <laughs> what he likes, you know. he Again, he set a slow qualifying time. He moved his way through the field, but he's not putting up blistering, you know, uh, lap times. Uh, last time by, he was at a 54.722. We, Eric Wolf is out there running a, a 54.354, so almost half a second slower than Eric Wolf. And again, Eric Wolf is on seven lap older tires than Harmon. So for a guy like that, uh, he's doing well. He's already got some good points. Yeah, he just does need to show up to some races, but you also kind of want to feel like you belong in the position you're in because it hasn't always been that way in NASCAR. It hasn't always been, oh, I get a win, I'm, all, I'm automatically yeah. in a championship. You know, there wasn't always a playoff. There wasn't always a race for the chase and a chase for the cup. We didn't have all of that in prior years in NASCAR. So you, a lot of these guys who have grown up watching it, even the old school drivers who still drive an actual NASCAR, they want to feel like they belong in that position point standings wise. Not, oh, I got to win, so I'm in, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think I think next year definitely just having a win. You might that might not guarantee you in though because another guy there might be some multiple race winners. You might be more than you know. I could see 16 guys winning races next year. I mean, we have enough. I think there are guys like that. This year, I think some of there there could be. You could get some guys that do that, but they're not going to get in because of race participation at this point. Like an Eli Hinton, he could pull out a win here. Joseph Helt. Right, but I don't think those guys are going to make it just based on that participation now. But you never know. I mean, getting a win, it's all but a guarantee, basically. You're basically guaranteed, but you never know. I mean, especially as we get more and more competition and you know, maybe more drivers start picking up wins, that one win still might see you sitting in 17th. Well, Hinton earlier, as I said, was a tale of two drivers, finds himself back in front of the 0-2 of Joseph Helt, so he's fought his way back into this thing at this point. Uh, we're going to focus on those two drivers. We're going to go down to the track and talk to Getty Buckner, see what he has to say. I know he's down there, there watching things. Oh, oh and another caution, caution comes out, so we're going to delay that for a second, see what happens here. Where? car. Looks like Meyer. Meyer is a slow car. Let's see what happened. Jeffrey Meyer again. Let's go back and watch. Jeffrey the Meyer. Here. Ooh, what? Yeah, I need to get a. Let's see. What oh, the number like. 44 of David Wright comes right up yeah, into the 44. 50 of Meyer. Meyer almost saves it. The car whips left, <laughs> whips right. Uh, I don't if know he would, if would have held on to that, that, that would have been an absolute miracle. But yeah. it didn't look like he damaged was... the car too much for how fast he was going when all that occurred. Oh yeah, for what happened there, his car. It's good. It's got a lot of bang and a bumper but he'll be able to he'll be able to keep going you know that's too just unfortunate slowed. for for Meyer uh, again we don't know really who's to blame for that wreck between him and Daniel Hallis but uh, just two you know wrecks that oh man just watching the onboard camp seeing him try to save that the wheel just snapping from left yeah, to right 44 definitely got him there and I think the 44 the 44 what the 44 should have done is gone down further in the lane Oh yeah, and I'm but sure. But he's like, I want, I want that outside lane. It's like, but yeah, but there's a guy there, and you're gonna, you're gonna nudge him like he did there. So that, that right there, that should be an EOL. If I don't see an EOL for that, I'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. right. 44 dives to the inside of him on the straightaway. He was catching up to him, but I think a lot of that had to do yeah. with draft. And then he started to move to the outside as the 50 started to make his entrance into the corner. So, right should have been down there, you know, ready to dive into that corner and. He was coming back out at the last second to get as much swoop as he could into the apex, and uh, that was the, the exact moment that that 
uh, Jeffrey Meyer decided uh, he was going to start cornering. So the 44 should receive a, an EOL after that. We'll see what happens, what race control decides to do here. We're going to go down to yeah. pit lane and see these guys make yet another pit stop. Well, my opinion, if the 92 gets an EOL for the Daniel Holloway, Daniel Holloway actually being the one wiggling and being loose right in front of him, then the 44 should get an EOL for, you know, basically turning the 50 there because you know, it wasn't like the 50 wiggled or anything and pulled down in front of him, you know, loose. And there was nothing right could do. Right just was in that lane and didn't give him the room. So we'll see. Yeah, a little bit of impatience maybe. I mean, none of those guys were in a spot really to race for a win here. Uh, still quite a few laps left. Eric Wolf comes off in first. Looks like was that was Hinton able to keep that second he was Jonathan yep. Schwartz moves up into third so he gains a position over Joseph Helt there on pit road very quick pit times by everybody again I mean Daniel Holloway with a 1605 I see coming off of pit road a couple guys with 15s but nothing like that 17 second pit stop we saw from Eric Wolf in that first uh first cycle I don't know what happened there man I watched the entrance I watched the exit and the pit was just super slow so I don't know if they added something or if uh or if the, they just held him for a second to get some damage, it just didn't display on his screen. That's that's interesting. So now we're going to go down to the racetrack. Uh, we'll go down trackside. We're going to talk to Getty Buckner, uh, see what, how he feels about that last wreck and uh, what he thinks happened. I mean, was that all the 44? Or, or are we just seeing things up here, Martin? I know we, you know, a lot of times, if we agree with each other, generally we're probably, you know, pretty correct on what happened, but... Let's go get another. Oh opinion. yeah, that looks that looks like David Wright <laughs> to me. Getty Buckner, do you have a copy, sir? I do, gentlemen. How's it going tonight? Hey man, doing great up here. How do you feel about that last wreck? I mean, uh, was that all the 44's fault? Um, well, I mean, you normally have to place blame on the car that is trailing, do you not? I mean, that's kind of the theory that we often go to. So, uh, could David Wright have given him a little bit more time or a little bit more space rather? Absolutely. Um, I kind of saw that as perhaps a little, a little bit of frustration because some of the, you know, there's been the same six or seven cars, it seems in a pack this entire race uh, with Thomas Harmon, Jeffrey Meyer, Brandon Dalton, all those guys have been racing side by side for almost 60 laps, probably, you know, and uh, I, I think that was frustration, to be honest. But again, you can never be sure. You can't. The only way to know is, uh, you know, the, to go down and talk to the guy and hope he tells you the truth. But uh, yeah, uh, David, uh, David, <laughs> I would assume David Wright is not going to not going <laughs> to tell you the truth if he did do it out of frustration, because that is means for suspension from the league. That's for sure. Now, I, I think they yeah. were just racing. Really, David Wright was just racing him too close, man. And, and it was just a, that perfect perfect timing of events you know he was i don't know was trying I'm to hearing... swing up and get that dive into the corner at that last second yeah, it sounds like yeah it sounds like it sounds like race control saying there's no eol there because that was jeffrey meyer came down it's like i i don't, I don't know, know about that because it it's like just if you're gonna get a racing incident man it, well, I mean, yeah, we're it's both like... on the same spot of the track at the same time well, and... you know what that's fine go racing incident but then why is the 92 get an eol earlier in the race for bumping daniel holloway who clearly comes down in front of him being loose I mean, there's nothing you can do there. Guy gets yeah, loose in front of you. It's like, I don't know. That it, it doesn't seem like an equal application if you're going to have an EOL for something someone can't avoid. And then David Wright doesn't get an EOL where he definitely could have gone to a it. lower line. That's true. There was, wow. you know. No, I, I definitely, I definitely agree. Where uh, I would put a uh, majority of the blame there on David Wright, but I also do know that in following some of those other cautions, uh, especially the one with Daniel Hallis, um, I think. You guys might have made a note of this, that looking at one camera view and then looking at the other. Yeah, it's completely almost, different. It's, it's weird. It's almost like a circus trick. You it know what I like mean? It looked like Callis and Meyer. Neither one of them did anything wrong there. And then if you looked at it in chopper view, it looked like Callis drove the car up into him. So it was, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Uh, it's tough. You know, only these guys know what's going on when they're down there in the car. It looks like we got... One to go here before we come back to the green flag. Getty, I'm going to let you stick around for a couple minutes if you want to take us to the green uh, down there. How's the track looking, man? Is, has things warmed up down there? Is it cooled off as, as the night's drawn on? I don't know. One thing I do know is that the handling of these cars has not has not gotten much better. Uh, you've been able to see the tail end of these cars wiggling all over the place. There's been plenty of opportunity for these guys to be, to be spinning 
um, but obviously they're some of the best drivers here in iRacing. So um, a lot, a lot of good saves. I saw Daniel, Daniel Halloway have, you know, a save where he was almost uh, 45 degrees to the left <laughs> um, uh, as far as you know his angle of the vehicle there. Uh, just great car control by these guys. I don't think I'd be able to really compete here at Pocono. I thought Meyer was going to save that one earlier when he got wiggled and, and you know, when, when Wright got into him. I thought he was going to save that, but that was just... I mean, I've seen, uh, in the Indy series, I've seen Pandolf make huge saves in the grass, and, um, you know, so I've, the saves that I've seen out of, the, out of our drivers here are just incredible. I, I've had a good one or two there at Richmond earlier in the year, and um, of course, you don't want to have to save your car all the time. You just want to be able to go straight and be fast, but that always, doesn't always happen. <laughs> well, guys, we got Jonathan Schwartz here in the 58. He's moved back up into third position after getting shuffled all the way back to the rear of the field early in this race. Um, I, you know, I can't believe that that he's gotten himself all the way back up to third. It's absolutely mind blowing. Uh, he got moved back there with. Martinez and, and gets his way all the way back into third. We'll see if he can go out there and compete for a win. But again, I think Eric Wolf might be on a, on a planet of his own. So, yeah, Eric Wolf obviously having a great dominating uh, performance here. But one of the one of the cars that I've been watching a lot is Brandon Dalton and Mike Springer, both whom need uh, you know they're in dire need of a good finish. Um, but you know their luck hasn't been great lately. But those guys have been near the top ten or in the top ten the whole race. Ooh. Yeah, both of them have had fairly good years sitting around, you know, typically collecting top tens. Mike Springer was very good early in the season, generally in the top five every race in those first mm -hmm. few races. Uh, Brandon Dalton's just a Mr. Consistent. I mean, it, the guy doesn't come out and steal victories, but we always see him up there in the top ten race after race after race. So he's doing very good yeah. for himself. Uh, another finish. It'd be nice to see him Ooh, collect another good finish. Kleinschmidt just Whoa. smoked the outside yeah, wall. Kleinschmidt. <laughs> I was, guys, I, at, I was just looking at I was just looking at and Johnson, but uh, yeah, Kleinschmidt hit that wall. It's yeah, Levine, Mike Avril, Martin. Or Levine, yeah, <laughs> Levine and uh, Johnson. Was, those teammates are right on each other's doors, going through that front stretch as well. Oh, and the 23 of Hinton spins the 58 of Jonathan Schwartz right after talking about Schwartz. I feel like I jinxed him, and Hinton just gets right into the back of him and keeps on driving. No apologies there from Hinton whatsoever. Yeah, he did not give. He just stayed right on a, on Schwartz's uh, quarter panel there. He did not give him any room. I mean, I thought they were going to spend a lot this sooner. From the cockpit view here of Hinton. Uh, yeah, he, he just gets back into the gas. Schwartz, you know, Schwartz is kind of sticking that little line. Hinton, Hinton was probably just in the gas a little too early there, but he didn't give an inch. He kept he right in the gas inch, pedal yeah. and just. It's like I just mean, go down a little bit more, and you would have been fine there. And yeah, I, I was I think looking. That's just that. I was looking to see if maybe the 23 uh, was reacting to maybe hitting that apron. We, I've seen a lot of cars getting loose off that corner there. Uh, there it just almost seems as if the 23 might have thought he cleared them. Um, you always want to give drivers a benefit of the doubt there, and obviously nothing malicious or intentional, but um, it just you, you just turned up into yeah, him, guys. Yeah, <laughs> you I'm know sure, what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm sure he thought he was clear, but that yeah, I was so close. That's like, dude, just you know, maybe kind of back it off just a little bit, get or just turn that wheel a little bit more, get a little bit lower. I don't know how loose it is though. So if you turn that wheel a little bit more, does he spin out? I don't know. Well, now we got the 23 has damage on that right front bumper as well, so mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna hurt. I mean, after running up here as well as he has all night and. The 58 to do what he did during this race and have it go like that at the, right at the end is is uh, Jonathan Schwartz, man. His luck. I'll tell you what. He's looked <laughs> like he could come out here and steal wins probably six weeks already. And I think uh -huh. he's got, you know, only three out of the six. Something happens oh. to go wrong right at the end of every oh, race he's in. So. <laughs> is that all? I have no pity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a chance to yeah. win six races. <laughs> oh, shucks. He got, he got yeah. wrecked out of um, one, right? Uh, what was it? It was Dover... Dover, Kansas, Kansas. And it was just a were, series. Yeah, those are two like, where he had those, and then Charlotte, he finally wins, and now he's another one where he had yeah, a good chance at a top three or top two even. And and uh, well, that's yeah. the thing with even the Dover and Kansas, he got screwed, but he ended up with the top two, you know, top three. Yeah. No. Whereas I'm this one, at, it's like he gets, you know, he's kind of out of it now. <laughs> I'm looking at Jonathan Schwartz's damage, and overall, man, I think he came out of it in pretty decent shape. If they can get that hood banged down just a little bit. Jonathan Schwartz, I mean, he has enough time to maybe not come back. Oh, man. Um, and Eli Hinton win. elects not to go. 
down pit road. I think that's a huge mistake by the 23. He's got to have, I would guess, based yeah, on my racing little. time, 30 to 45 seconds of repairs, at least on the front end of that car. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big mashup, actually. Yeah. He's got yeah, a lot yeah. more damage, actually, than uh, you know, if you look at uh, Schwartz. Yeah, Schwartz just has that little, you know, that can you can knock that down probably 20 seconds. That'll be fine. He won't go down a lap. I, I think so Schwartz he'll be, he'll be could easily there. salvage a good point stay out of this. I think he could actually mm -hmm. find himself creeping inside the top 10 if, yeah. you know, we get green flags here and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Eli Hilton, though, or Hinton, sorry, he has damage that was comparable to what John Theodore had earlier for when he T-boned Daniel Hallis. And obviously John Theodore, you know, isn't running that well anymore <laughs> as, as, a, as a consequence of all that damage. So I don't know. Um, I get, definitely agree with you, Ryan, staying out. I'm looking at I'm looking at Wolf. Side of Wolf's car has got scraped, so he's been scraping the wall a few times. And same with uh, same with uh, Joseph Helt. I mean, they got some scrapes and some bumps, so it's kind of... I think I think that that pit that that uh, pit stop there that uh, Eric Wolf was talking about with the 17 second pit stop. I do believe he must he must have had some damage there because no one else has had a pit stop look that looked like. Yeah, that he said no race. damage to the car, and I've been questioning well, that all the, night. You know, the, I'm I'm amazed at that too because I didn't. See, yeah, we didn't see anything during that. He, I mean, he was in the lead. He had he wasn't bumping or banging any other cars, so he didn't have to worry about that. It's like where did he must have caught the wall and we just missed it. Mm hmm. Well, we're not going to have long to go here as we come back to the green flag. Getty, I wanted to, while you're still in here, before we let you go, man, I just wanted to give you the opportunity, uh, if you want to shout out maybe the Indy series that we run on Thursday nights. We did talk about the 250 earlier. Nah. Uh, nah. Are you doing any, nah. <laughs> are, are you doing any broadcasting, you think, this week? Or? Well, um, as you know, me and David wrapped up our show yesterday, which I feel, um, as far as Pocono goes, it was okay. You know, Pocono isn't always the top seller. Uh, but for the Indy Series, we're going to most sports, which is also known as Canadian Tire, uh, up there in Ontario. Uh, it's going to be two duels, uh, which is something you don't see on road courses. And um, Eric Weatherholtz is going to be passing down information here in the very near future to all the drivers. And if we can get, you know, I think between I saw it in general that, already. Yeah, if we can get that 12, you know, that magic number for me, because I'll probably be doing it solo for road courses. I can't imagine David Wellborn's going to want to, um, <laughs> you know, s sacrifice even more of his time here. But um, Not that he doesn't give us enough already, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, David, I mean, he's uh, we've got him handcuffed, ball and chain, the whole nine <laughs> yards. But uh, I want that magic number of like 12, 13, because I can definitely – you know, on a road course, it's very easy to keep things interesting. It always broadcasts well. It, um, you know, and you, if you watched the um, the race last week, obviously it being on an oval is a little bit different, but those cars are still so fast and so competitive, and you just sit there and your jaw is dropped as you watch them just carve through those those, those turns. And that's even just watching the slower guys. Oh, it's a pleasure to watch Indianapolis having that that many cars doing two. 220 miles per hour and weaving back and forth left and right inches from one another and it's not like these where you can handle a bump to the car in front of you you bump the car in front of you in indy in an indy car and uh the car is either completely ruined or you just killed yourself <laughs> yeah no exactly that is called a deceased individual that that's what we call those um <laughs> someone that gets tagged like that um, I've been going through replays of the last uh, of the few couple ovals, the few couple, you like that? Uh, the last couple oval races we've done, I'm going to be putting up a little highlight video here in a little bit. But uh, awesome. yeah, Indy Series is great. And then just one thing I want to say is uh, to the drivers that are maybe a little reluctant to go out on the road course because they think that they might be slow, it's kind of a pride thing. I, you know, I kindly say, uh, please just leave your purse at home. <laughs> just get out there and do it anyway. It's you're gonna have so much fun. Drop the dress, get out there, and turn left and right. That's yeah. that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, well, yeah I want to give fun. it a try. So yeah, I I do too. Honestly, I'm interested. I just feel like you know if I'm gonna do it, I want to put three or four days ahead of the race aside and and uh, actually get some practice and try to be somewhat competitive. You know, I, I've yeah. got a good buddy who races those road courses, and he came to me the other day. He just picked up iRacing, just bought a wheel and all of that. And he's like, oh, yeah, I started racing. I, I don't remember what track it was. He said, oh, the leaders were running like 159s, and I'm running a 202. And I'm like, dude, on those tracks where the leader's running a 159, I'm running like a two-minute, 10-second lap. Like, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. within, I'm not within 10 seconds of the leaders. So for him to be within a few seconds of the leaders in just the short know. time that he's 
been on iRacing. He's been doing those one, road courses his whole one thing, life. So. One thing that I always say is that driving the track and driving the car is far more important than driving, you know, trying to drive That's other true. opponents. And <laughs> you, you, you know, you're going to stay in the zone. You're, I mean an hour and a half race is just going to fly by. It's yeah, that's be... the fun part of it. Only the best of the best of the best are really competing against another car, you know. Most well, of we these, see that most at... drivers are out there just driving the track. Yep. Well, we see and that then... in our series. We see that in these series, too, with, like, Watkins, Glenn, and Sonoma. It's like it's you, so much you just have to worry about driving the track because yeah. if you worry about driving other people, you're just going to be driving in the sand the whole time anyway. <laughs> yeah, be be before we start this, just another note. Uh, the road courses coming up are definitely the more popular ones, Road America, Watkins Glen, things of that nature. So uh, I look forward to seeing everyone out there and uh, as we finish up these last eight laps. Yeah, we're going to go green. Yeah, Have a great night, out, Getty Buckner. On the outside. Thank Joseph you. Helton to the rear of uh, Hinton there. Yeah, Hinton again. Oh, Hinton's got oh, damage. Yeah. And Hinton needed that. I mean, this is another few wow. laps Hinton can go, and he can avoid having to pit here. So that was in the back of the field. That was in uh, the back Klein of the field. Schmidt, David John Wellborn. Theodore. Yeah, David John. Wellborn got into the rear of. David Wellborn got in the rear of Hustad, slowed down. So then the 89 and the 35, it just a quarry in fact, and collects. Sam Niederhelm is spinning, spinning in back. Yeah. I mean that that. that took i mean it didn't take out a lot of cars i don't know about uh, significant damage but it involved several cars for sure um, yeah that was that all started with it, it looks like it started with david wellborn just getting a little too much of a jump on wade houston maybe wade houston was a little slow nah. well wade houston got a good jump and then checked up because in front of him chris james was going at a steady pace and Houston got too good of a jump and had to check up a little bit and that caused the accordion effect and that looks familiar Martin I feel like you and I had a little tangle like this there at Richmond earlier in the year as far as people um, yeah. you know getting towards the end of the race uh, people getting a, uh -huh. a little impatient the restarts this year in this league uh, definitely our biggest opportunity for growth as a as a league um, some of it our restarts have been great and, yeah and that's with anybody of course but um yeah, of course, you never want to see that. You don't want to see, and, and the pacing laps here are so long and agonizing. <laughs> so guys, uh, maybe I missed it. The... But what, what happened to Hustad? Why is he so far back in the first place? I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I'm not sure how he fell all the way back to the start in that position anyway, but... Hustad, didn't he, he... He got turned by the uh, uh, 23 of H H Hinton. No, correct? that was the 58 no, was... of Jonathan Schwartz, yeah, who sits in 21st. Schwartz. Oh, correct. That's correct. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Houston. I missed that. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like he, allowed, it doesn't seem like he had have, a ton of damage. Maybe they did one of those weird pit strategies. You know, Hughes is back there as well. He's been jumping in and out of pit road last few cautions. Yeah, I mean, a story here. You got Brandon Dalton, Thomas Harmon, Mike Springer, who were driving around, you know, 11th, 12th, 13th position all night. They're now up into 5th, 6th, and 7th. I mean, these guys have kind of just yeah. stuck around in the leaders, you know, for once. You know, normally we see, we think to ourselves, hey, if you're out front, you're a little more safe because that's where everybody's more comfortable. You know, the, the most comfortable guys in the car are typically towards the front, and that's where you want to be to try to avoid a wreck. But we've had a, a lot of stuff happen from the front and, and not cause a big pile up. That was definitely, you know, this wreck was the biggest one of the, of the race all night so far. So... Uh, those guys just sticking around, avoiding those those couple accidents, and they've kind of just been gifted fifth, sixth, and seventh position at this point. Now, uh, a couple things that again, I haven't been following your broadcast, uh, you know, the the for the entire time as far as the the sound. So I've been I've been watching it, of course. But one of the guys that I'm impressed with right now is Eric Johnson. He's been one you know one of a handful of drivers. Um, that have not had great luck. He's always fast, but he's been taken out of a lot of these races recently. Yep. So uh, him being, he's you know, great. yeah, he's he, he's had a great totally race. Clean, I think. You haven't called his name. You know what I mean? Like it's it's one of those races mm -hmm. where it's just he's just minding his own business. Yeah, like, and he's got a good chance here of overtaking Hinton for second. I mean, Hinton is damaged heavily. So as soon as one green flag is run. Assuming we get that, Hinton is going to drop at least four or five positions, especially yeah. coming out turn two or something like that. There's yeah, no within way. a couple laps, he's he's definitely going to lose quite a bit. I, I still I mean, can't he's, believe he's not come down. He's, he's road, banking but. on he's banking on the fact that these cautions yeah um, another restart could, caution could, could, could lead to other cautions. And 
Uh, Brandon Dalton, again, top five. Thomas Harmon, who never goes away. Uh, Mike Springer. Justin Levine, um, who has been... Uh, I'm not liking what uh, Daniel Ellis was doing there. <laughs> Daniel Ellis is sitting in the pace car just as that uh, lucky dog was coming by, and I thought, oh, great, that lucky dog's going to drive <laughs> through the pace car himself and get sm- just smash into him. It's like, don't hide in the pace car like that. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, people uh, assume that pace car is an empty car, and then you're sitting in it. <laughs> Alec Martinez again. That's a name I actually don't recognize, He's back up guys. There. He's um, brand new. Yeah, he is brand new. So yeah, uh, him yeah. and him and Eli Hinton, Hinton Motorsports, both both their debuts today. Yeah, round of applause for those gentlemen coming. And he's in all the way instead. back because he had a black flag on that first uh, caution. And then he had an EOL because he got into the Daniel Holloway. I don't agree with that EOL because we didn't give it no EOL for Hinton, no EOL for David Wright. I don't know why 92 Alec Martinez gets an EOL for running into a guy that's already loose and just slows up really much, a lot in front of him coming out of turn two. So it's kind of strange how he got the EOL, but no one else has gotten EOLs for also causing wrecks. One of the cool oh, things about right. Pocono that happened <laughs> in yesterday's race as well is even with all the damage that has been passed out in this race, even with all the cautions, we still have 26 mm-hmm. drivers on the lead lap. So yep. if there's another you know incident, which let's say one of these points guys, like Eric Johnson, let's just say, I hate to jinx him, he gets taken out. He's not going to drop down to 5th or 12th or what. He's going to drop all the way down to almost 30th position. Uh, because of all the cars on this lead lap, if he is getting, you know, if 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 he sustains so much damage that he can't continue, so um, that's that's enormous, and that's kind of what happened last night as well uh, with all the cars on the lead lap. Oh yeah, we restarted that. I mean, the end of the race, we restarted with everyone on the lead lap except for Daniel, who got out of the car to race control the last restart. Mm-hmm. It's like I, yeah, it's like when I I got wrecked out at that like lap 40 or whatever by Phillips and I was just I was a lap down I was the only car lap down got the lucky dog the next caution and I was in 21st or whatever and then yeah and it, the it's last not like start, you, you know nothing happened I mean it was just it's not like we had so many cautions that there was so many lucky dogs we only had four cautions last night mm-hmm. so it's just it's just these guys are um, especially as the season goes on these guys are really smart uh, they know how to beat the pace car off. They know what damage they can That's and can't true, yeah. do, and all that stuff. It's been it's been really great to watch some of the the newer drivers that have joined us this year uh, progress just as an overall driver, not just you know uh, here in competing like for fifth, but as far as just all the strategies involved. You a lot of different strategies. In our and on our end has tried to, you know, these really unique strategies as far as uh, sticking to, you know, they're going to pit this lap regardless and all that stuff. So um, it's really fun. It's it's definitely added a whole uh, another page to the uh, Grand National Series for sure. Molnar Series, um, I imagine, has probably done the same. Well, Getty, I want to thank you for joining us in the booth towards the conclusion of this race. We're going to take things to green here. I mm-hmm. uh, hope you have a wonderful night this evening. We hope to see you back Thursday here on DRL TV for that that awesome uh, heat yep. lap, you know, uh, whatever it is, two heat racing there at the, the road course there in the Indy Series. Yep. It would be great. Yep. It, it'll be a great race, and uh, you guys enjoy the rest of this one. Thank you. All right, man. Have a great night. Be getting. Yep. See you. Yeah, we've been mentioning the Grand National Race. This one's been a little sloppier than the Grand National Race. Grand National, only four. I think that last co- last caution ran the Grand National was just kind of a bonehead mistake by myself. But otherwise, that was a pretty clean race last night. And this one's gotten a little sloppy here in the last probably 20 laps. Yeah, and again, I, I think I said it early in the race. Those cautions breed cautions, you know. I, I expected mm-hmm. it sooner than we got it tonight, but... It's come out, and it's during crunch time. I mean, these guys are all trying to make up as many positions as possible in just a couple laps. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised, Martin, to see another wreck before we get yeah. to the, the checkered well, flag here. I mean, they got two to go coming to, to green. So it is a green-white checker, but this is a big racetrack, two and a half miles. Well, restarts are the restarts are pretty uh, scary here because, they yeah, it's like the there's just so much speed on that front stretch. It seems like people take off. And it goes three, four wide. Sometimes people start switching lanes, which is illegal, mind you, for our league. But 
You'll get yeah, people I mean, that they want the if position. a guy's slow in front of you, if a guy's slow in front of you, suddenly that inside line takes off or the outside line takes off and goes and you're losing five, six, seven positions. It's like, what do I do? What do I do? I got to pass. I got to get around this guy who's missing his shift or is slow or whatever it is. And then you move into another lane and another guy has already moved into that lane. And that's where you, you know, or you just pile into the back of the guy in front of you because you take off. You see the leaders go and the guy in front of you misses in, you know, and then turn one, and then you then you have all that going in turn one as well, and you know I think I think Pocono, yeah, Pocono is one of the restart areas where it's restarts that are pretty uh, tricky to get right and for it to work. Yeah, I mean they're fast. If you get in the gas too much mm -hmm. and you get up on the bumper, the same thing you're happens. Boom, you're like right it into did to, to Wade Hughes that on that last restart. I mean you're in them, and when when you check up, the guy behind you's not ready for it. I mean, that's yeah, when he's in the, uh, in the chain effect. Yeah, it's just a coordinate effect, yep. <laughs> so the pace car is going to drop down pit road here, and we're going to go green one last time. Eric Wolf, nice jump. And there it is again. Guys are right up into their bumper, the guy in front of them. The 23 Ooh. there of Hinton. We know he has a and slow car. Four but wide on the front there. Was after the start finish line, so that, that restart area was cleared, it looked like, for the most part, before most people started moving. The 21 of Eric Johnson wow. we just talked about to the inside there of Joseph Held. Let's see if Eric Johnson can get this position. Oh, and he pulls in behind the 0-2. Thomas Harmon has fought his way to fifth. He's putting some pressure on, so things are going to get dicey on this last lap, Martin. I, I hope this thing goes green, man. We just got to make it back to this. Start oh, finish line. Man, David Wright got a run out there and almost plowed into that. He's going to pass three cars coming out of turn two. There goes Thomas Whoa. Harmon to the inside of the 21 of Eric Johnson. Looks like he's going to get yes. the pass on the 21. Oh, and there goes there goes uh, the. Now I was watching. I was watching David oh, Wright no. pass here, and he forces that the causes, caution does uh, come out that? right at the end of the race. Oh man, where is he? He's so. So the guys don't get to finish the last lap, but Martin, uh, I mean, that Eric was, Wolf gets I his first was, victory, man. <laughs> who was that? Who is that car? That was Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson. Well, it wasn't Mark Johnson's fault, but... David Wright was passing those three cars on the backstretch. Going into turn three, him and Mike Springer get almost into each other. Springer is forced up into Mark Johnson. Johnson then gets loose, and just his car gets spins around on him. And I think I don't know if yeah, that was hitting anyone else. I don't know if that was as much Springer coming up into him as Mark Johnson coming down into Springer. I mean, it looks like uh, so well, Wright dives to the inside. Right takes the inside yeah. line. Mike Springer sees him. It looks like at the last second for whatever reason he gets real close to him. And uh, yeah, Mike was just trying to make a little bit of room there, not get into the 44. And Mark Johnson pinched him and got into. Well, him. because I think I think Mark Johnson didn't know that David Wright was down there, and that's the problem. It's David Wright, he blew <laughs> yeah. past. That was a he run. blew past the 92, the 98, and the 12 there, and suddenly he's on the inside taking away that position from Mike Springer. So now Springer can't go where he, where probably Johnson thought he was going to be. Right. Johnson thought Springer was going to go right you to know, that yellow line, and he didn't. And you know, let's, see, they, let's go in the cockpit. I'm going in my cockpit here. Watching this, at no point, yeah, at no point in that whole series there. Can Johnson Johnson never sees David Wright. Yeah, he can't see him at all. He all he can see in is a big mirror, orange Reese's car, right? Yeah, right in his so side. He doesn't realize. Yeah, he does not realize at all that Mike Springer has to come up because David Wright's down there. So that was, I mean, again, that that was David. I mean, it's on David Wright, but it's not. I, you know, it's a racing incident, obviously. I mean, it's like he has the speed. He's making the moves. It's the last lap. That's just unfortunate for Mark Johnson because he had. <laughs> He had nowhere to go. We're going to look at the 12 of Mike Springer and see what he sees here. I know he can see both of these guys in his mirror. He knows David Wright's going to the inside. Yeah, He's Mike Springer. Trying to avoid him. Uh, you know, the, the 44 gets down in there. He does a great job. He sticks it down there. But, of course, he wiggles a uh -huh. little bit when he gets in the brake card. And Mike Springer wiggles a little bit with him. And, and Mark Johnson just expected him to go down towards that yellow line because he couldn't see the 44 at all, and he didn't go to yeah. the yellow line because the 44 was taking up that space on the track. So, 
Uh, well, that's the problem. It's like yeah, Mike Springer. Mike Springer knows there's a guy on the inside and the outside. He's, I mean, he can see David Wright coming on the inside. And he's like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Now at this point, does he back out? He could have backed out, but he doesn't want to give up that position. Yeah. You know Unfortunate who? You know, it's, it's really yeah. I mean, that's just that's racing. That's that's not Mark Johnson's fault. That's not Springer's fault. That's I mean, if it's anyone's fault, it's going to be David Wright, and it's not David. I mean, at this point, you got to go and get what you can get. <laughs> There's the 24 of Eric Wolf burning it down on the start finish line. Well deserved win by Wolf. Uh, he dominated yeah, this I race. That finally. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, 64 Yo. laps led tonight by Eric Wolf. He finishes in first. Eli Hinton finishes second. Yeah, His first race with the DRO. Getty said that. Yeah, Getty said that. He's like, he's banking on that yellow flag coming out. He before got it, he, man. He, I, I thought it was position. a silly decision to stay out, but he makes it work and gets a second place finish. Joseph Helt finishes third yeah, in his Joseph second Hel race with the DRL. Thomas Harmon. Thomas Harmon from 26th all the way to 4th. Yeah, great work by him. <laughs> uh, started behind Eric Johnson on that last restart. Actually, him, David and, Wright also. him and Helt started behind uh, Eric yep. Johnson. Johnson falls back and finishes 5th. Justin Levine gets 6th. Brandon Dalton 7th. David Wright. Look at David Wright. Eighth. David Wright, from 29th to eighth, so he went up 21 positions as well. That's, yeah, great work by him. Moves. Mike Springer still after that contact gets the ninth spot. Uh -huh. Alec Martinez still at, worked his way back up to tenth. Great job by Martinez there in his first race with DRL. Matthew George gets 11th. Jim Westerfield 12th. Wade Hustad comes back in 13th after leading five laps in this race. Uh, Chris James 14th, 15th. Goes to Sean Hughes, matches his car number there. Jordan Gonzalez comes back uh, after all the pits and damage and stuff he had to get repaired. Comes back to get a 16th place finish, so good on Jordan Gonzalez there. Daniel Holloway 17th. 18th goes to David Wellborn. Kind of just hung around all race long. We didn't talk about Wellborn, I don't think, at all tonight, but... Uh, uh, I think he was tangled up in a little bit of a mess early earlier in the race. He gets the 18th spot. 19th goes to Sam Niederhelm. 20th goes to Cy Jackson. 21st to John Theodore. 22nd, Matt Kleinschmidt. 23rd, Joshua Wakefield. 24th, Jonathan Schwartz. After that unfortunate turning by the 23, gets in the, the 24th position. James Pandolf, uh, 25th. 26th goes to Mark Johnson after that, that mishap at the end. Jeffrey Meyer gets 27th. P.J. O'Leary, 28th. 29th goes to Hallis. 30th, Christopher Pope. And 31st, Chris Stouffer in his first race back. So uh, it was a great race, Martin. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, you know, unfortunate how things went there for Schwartz after fighting as hard as he did to get back to the position that he got in for him to, to get the finish that, that he did. But um, Eric Wolf finally gets himself a victory. Good on him. Let's go down and talk to Joseph Helt, who is in the position here. Find him, Mr. Help. That. I don't know, Martin. Do you see Joseph Help? Any? Uh, Joseph Help, where are you? <laughs> so we don't currently have Mr. Help on the radio, so I'm gonna yeah. uh, let's grab Thomas Harmon. Like oh. Who gets the, the Thomas Harmon? Yeah, let, he got the fourth place finish. Let's see if he's still here. Thomas Harmon, you got a copy, sir? 10 4, I got you. Hey, uh, you kind of hung around all race, man. Um, I, I know you, most of the race, you you started way in the back early, and then you kind of ran around that 10th position for what seemed like forever, and then guys started falling out from the front, having some accidents. Hustad got moved back. Uh, the 58 of Jonathan Schwartz got moved back after getting turned by the 23, and you come away with a fourth place finish. What was it like out there tonight? slick to put it nicely um after a couple laps the car would want to push and if you push really hard and if you uh, downshifted there's it wanted to get sideways on you especially if you got in the gas too hard on exit but uh the warm track definitely made it interesting yeah were you uh i mean most of your night was it spent racing other drivers or you were just trying to keep the car under you um to be honest it was mostly racing other drivers uh it's hard to pass here, and I felt comfortable enough with the track that I didn't need to focus more on the track, and I could try to get the track position. Um, as the runs went on, that first green run, I kind of plateaued uh, when I burned too much of my stuff up. 
Yeah, it seemed like uh, everybody moved closer to the same lap times as those green flag runs went on. So I'm glad you're comfortable with the track. I don't know how that statement can even be made because Pocono is not an easy place to race. But you pull out the fourth place finish tonight. I was talking uh, early in the race, actually saying that, that you didn't look super comfortable here tonight because we've, you know, since you've been back, we've been used to seeing you run in the top five. And uh, you proved me wrong. I mean, you come back and collect yet another top five. So great work tonight. Would you like to give a shout out to anybody before we let you go? Yeah, uh, shout out to Great Lakes Forest Products um, for sponsoring again. Uh, DRL throwing together the league. Um, uh, Molnar for sponsoring the league. Uh, Avril on the side of the car. Spotter Dimitri. And uh, give a shout out to my daughter if she's still awake watching this thing. Awesome, man. Thanks for having the family tune in. We appreciate all of our viewers and all of our drivers for, for everything. Um, you know, we wouldn't be able to broadcast this thing if it wasn't for you guys out here racing. So have a wonderful night. We hope to see you back again next week, Thomas. Sounds good. See you there. So now we do have Mr. Helt is here. We're going to pull him in. I might have missed him before, but Joseph Helt, do you have a copy? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Hey, man, only second race with the DRL, I believe. He come away with a third place finish. Uh, how are you feeling? Feels good. It was a lot of fun. Glad to have some long runs there. Longest runs of the week for sure. Yeah, a little different than those official races were. Do you think it was the changes that they made to the car today, or was everybody just respecting one another out there tonight? Uh, I think it was a lot of respect going on. The changes didn't feel that drastic. The lap times seemed pretty similar to what we were running before. Um, but car felt car felt really good. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, you, you kind of just hung around top five all night. You did a very good job out there controlling the car. You started in 11th, quickly moved yourself into that top five uh, you know, position. I know um, early in the race, Eric Wolf had a very weird slash slow pit stop, whatever happened there. Um, and that's, I think, when you first moved into the top three and you were able to hang on to it. So um, Hughes, congrats uh, on, on finishing third. You think you're going to be here for the rest of the season with the DRL? I don't know if you'll make that 80% cutoff or not. Are, are you aware of whether you can do that? or? Uh, I have no idea. I'm just uh, looking to run some races and, and have some fun. And who knows, if I could sneak into it, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'll just try to win some races. There you go. I'm sure we'll see you back next year ready, for, ready to go out there and actually compete for a, a championship when it comes playoff time. So. Thank you again. Uh, congrats again on third. And do you want to give a shout out to anybody before we let you go? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I just want to give a shout out to uh, Trent, Jake, uh, my dad, uh, Jay Sell and D Long for watching tonight. Awesome, man. Again, shout out to all the viewers. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you watching it. So, um, Joe, have a wonderful night and we'll see you back next week, man. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for what you do. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. Now we're going to go get Eli Hinton in his first race with Dynasty Racing. He comes away with a second place finish. Questionable to stay out on the track like he did, but uh, made it work. I mean, it, those cautions came out. That's what he was banking on, and that's what he got. Eli Hinton, you got a copy, sir. Yeah, I got you. Hey, uh, Ryan up in the booth. Uh, I thought you were gambling by staying out like you did. Uh, got those couple cautions you needed. You did have some damage to the front end of the car. Didn't come into the pits to even see what it was going to take to get it repaired there. Is that what you were banking on was, was, uh, cautions coming out or did you think you actually had the speed to stick up there in, in second or third to the end of that race? Well, I knew I could stick up there. I mean, I, from inside the car, I didn't see the damage. So even if I did have damage, I mean, that was my best shot. Just staying out there. So uh, generally frowned upon what you did to Mr. Schwartz there, just kind of drove through him. Uh, what was that from your point of view? Uh, do you think he came down India or you guys just made contact? And um, I mean, you just kept it going. Uh, you raced really well all night when you were out there out front by yourself. The only person on the track was Eric Wolf, who was the only individual who finished ahead of you tonight. Uh, how do you feel about getting into the 58 there of Schwartz? I mean, I feel like I was a little faster than him. I mean, coming off the corner, I probably came up a little bit. I feel like he could have left more room, but it was definitely my fault. Yeah, tough race in there. Uh, we didn't see an AOL. I'm sure race control called it a racing incident. It is what it is, man. Racing does happen. Uh, James messaged me early in the week. You stole my number, man. 
23 that's yours <laughs> <laughs> that's what i race in the trucks and, and and the b cars when i do race them um and i generally broadcast every week so i told him you know what go ahead the uh, only cup race i'd like to make it into all season is watkins Glen, and and now that you have my number 23 i might just be up here in the booth for that one too but awesome to see you out there representing the number congratulations on the second place finish in your first race back are we going to continue to see here see you here week in and week out you should see me here awesome Thank eli you. Yeah, point to be here. It's a well, fun race. Well, congrats again. I know it was a better race than most of the officials were this week. Do you want to give a shout-out to anybody this evening? Uh, my teammate, Alec Martinez, he didn't finish as good as he wanted to. I think he's all faster, but still top 10. Yeah, he fought his way back in. That was a, a great job by him. Well, thank you for, for showing up this evening, and we hope to see you again next week, Eli. Have a good night. Yep, see you. Well, Arton. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, man. I mean, what are we, 13 races in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about friggin' time Mr. Wolf gets himself a win. Let's get a chat with Eric Wolf. Eric Wolf, you got a copy. Oh, I moved him to the wrong channel. Eric Wolf, you got a copy, sir? Uh, yeah, I do. I moved you to the wrong channel there for a second. Man, I've been I've been looking forward to this interview like all friggin' season. Can't believe it took 13 races to finally happen, but you came away with a win, man. How's it feel? Oh my goodness. It feels great trying to get that monkey off my back. I felt like I've been so close so many times and just for one reason or the other, the race didn't work out for me. It's nice to finally just have one go to plan and finally bring one home. Yeah. After chatting with you in that first pit stop, we didn't see that really happen the rest of the night. So I don't know what that was. If you had damage that it just wasn't showing on screen or, or why the pit stop? Cause I watched you slide into the box. Perfect. You stopped instantly. The car was up instantly and you got out well. So uh, I was like, oh man, Eric Wolf, he can't throw this race away uh, on pit road. That would be horrible because I know pit road plays a big factor here at uh, at Pocono. But you still came away with the win, man. You led uh, an enormous amount of laps here tonight. You did very well for yourself. Is Pocono one of your 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 better tracks? Yeah, I think it is. These uh, big tracks with the sweeping corners. There's so much time spent in the corner where you're kind of undulating the brake and the throttle and trying to get the most out of it while saving tires. I just feel like this type of track, this in Indianapolis, they really suit my driving style. There's a really rhythmic feel to them. If you can get it right, uh, you just keep it up and you basically race the track. And that's what I did here. Yeah, you said it in that pre-race interview, and I think I said it a couple other times during the broadcast. You're you're one of the best at driving the car on the edge, and that much time in the corner, that's what you're doing the whole way through, you know, making sure the back end doesn't slide around on you. and making sure you don't plow that wall coming out. So we did see a little bit of damage uh, scrapes on your car. Did you contact that wall a couple times or was that maybe from getting into other drivers or? Um, there towards the end, I think Eli rubbed the rear end a little bit and I know in the tunnel turn one time on a restart, I got someone got into me a little bit, but I don't, I mean, it's possible I could have scraped the wall. I'm not sure. I came to it pretty close several times. Uh, nothing that affected the performance though, luckily. Yeah, clearly uh, ran away with it all night, man. It put quick gaps on people, and, and the gap kept growing as those runs went on. So congratulations again on your first win. It's it's about time. You know, after seeing how dominant you were last year, uh, I'm surprised we had to wait this long to see you in, in victory lane. But um, congratulations again. You want to shout out anybody tonight before we cut you loose? All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, fine. it feels good. I want to thank the DPR guys who brought me on board to be on their team. They help me out a lot. We do practices together and share race information. They helped me during this race with fuel calcs and giving me good spotter info. Just want to thank those guys. I also want to thank Tater and James for putting on the league. You guys for always putting on a great broadcast. Monar Automotive for coming on board and everybody that helps make this league about the best thing to run in high racing. So it's a lot of fun. Just uh, thankful to be a part of it. Awesome, Eric. Well, we're glad to have you, man. Uh, hope to see you back again next week competing for, hopefully, your second win of the season. Won't be still looking for that elusive first win. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Thank you. You guys have, have a good night. Have a good night, Eric. Well, that was Eric Wolf. He is our winner tonight. Martin, uh, how do you feel about the race? I mean, I think it went really well. Yeah, it was a little sloppier than the Grand National, but, you know, what are you going to do? 
A little, I mean, the Grand National had four four cautions for 16 laps. I think we had five, maybe six cautions. A couple of them were right there at the end where it's just a Yeah, and a it's a 20-lap uh, longer yeah, race. Yeah, the, the restart caution thing. Yeah, you we're know, always going to get I mean, As those laps wind <laughs> down, again, everybody's trying to make those moves on the restart or within a lap of the restart. So I do want to point out, guys, tonight, tonight's race was sponsored by Great Lakes Forest Products Incorporated. Uh, this is their second week in a row sponsoring a race for us. So thank a huge shout out to them. I know, uh, nobody else really has mentioned it. Uh, big shout out to those guys for coming on board and sponsoring a race. Anybody who is watching this, all of our viewers, you can still sponsor races. There are races open. Uh, Molnar Automotive is the series sponsorship, but if you want to come in and maybe toss a little prize money or, or put something towards some guys, maybe sponsor a race or two. Um, throughout the season, uh, please you know show up, or you can go right to our website at www.dynastyracingleague.com, and there is a donation button right there on the home page. If you want to help the league out, anything we get from any outside source goes right to back to these drivers and making the league better and um, improving our broadcast every week and the graphics and all of that stuff. So, a big shout out to those guys for coming on board for a couple races here. Um, next race of this series, we're coming to Michigan next week. I don't know if anybody noticed at the beginning of this broadcast, I had that graphic up and uh, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I don't know why I posted all of that stuff before this one started. Woke a up a little graphic, bit late. Yeah, you know? It is a good looking graphic. Uh, speaking of that, uh, thank you, Martin, for, for all the work you put in every week, man. Uh, I know working on this stuff and getting everybody updated and the banners on the cars and all the graphics that you guys see on the screen uh, are all made by Martin Wenzel. They come to you thanks to Jordan Gonzalez, who uh, works on on the overlays and stuff like that to get the stuff actually onto the screen. But Martin does produce all of that content, our new logos and all of that. But another uh, big track next week. I mean, two miles, Martin, at Michigan. It's uh, huge, wide corners. What, what I think we've seen in the past generally is the guys drive from outside to inside for the first few laps, and then they kind of tend to run a middle line for you know, the middle of the run, and then later in the run they run a high line. So definitely going to be some interesting driving. Nothing like any other track we've raced yet this year. Yeah, it's, it's a big track. and What is it? It's a two-mile track, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so... That'll be an interesting one. I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna run it or not in the national, just because. I'm. I'm starting to think some. Sometimes these like big tracks, I just don't have the. Oh, Michigan's don't super have the fun speed. In the trucks, but it's it is super fun. fun in the trucks. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. I don't know how it is in the Grand National car, but uh, we will be back yeah. here next Tuesday night. Me and Martin Wenzel at yeah, 9:25 p.m. Eastern for that broadcast. Uh, the next broadcast on TRL TV, we have Canadian Tire, the most sports duels. Uh, that is probably coming up again. Uh, we're hoping that Getty Buckner will be here to broadcast that on Thursday evening. If we have enough drivers, that if will come to you yep. on DRL TV. If not, we'll still be back here Monday night for the Grand National Series, the Northeast Ohio yeah. Busters. Getty's all over it. Getty's all over up for broadcasting that. It's all just up to us to show up. I and mean, if there's not, if there's only like five drivers out there, he's not going to broadcast it because that's not going to be fun to watch. But get, exactly. you know, he's. I think the target number is twelve. If you get twelve out there, he's going to throw up that broadcast. And there are some dual racing there. So anybody who's still watching tonight, please tune in on Thursday if you can. And, and if there's any drivers that are catching this uh, live or or afterwards, please. Uh, Put in, you know, whatever, put in four or five hours of practice in the next day and a day or two, whatever day and a half you have between now and, and that race and come out and show up and, and race at Mosport. I think it'll be fun. I mean, even if you're not super comfortable in the car, uh, you're just racing against the track. If you're not fast, you're talking 10 second gaps. You're not talking one second gaps like you have on ovals. Um so if you're not quick, the only thing, the only person you're going to wreck out is yourself. You're not going to ruin anybody else's race by being out there and, and getting used to running some road courses and getting used to the cars. So um, big shout out to everybody in the Dynasty Racing League. James Pandolf, Tater Bowman, our owners. Uh, Tater for getting everything going as far as financial, you know, financially last year, getting the league off the ground financially. And then uh, this year handling all of that stuff behind the scenes. Martin and Jordan, I thank you guys for all the graphics and uh, everything that we get to see on the screen here, all the logos and stuff like that. 
uh, Daniel Hallis, Taylor Butcher Benjamin, Getty Buckner, David Wellborn Jr., all of those guys for the time they put in, specifically David Wellborn for what he does as far as broadcasting goes. Uh, very few races he hasn't been here to broadcast, uh, and he's even stepped in, you know, when when last second things come up or. Uh, he, he's always there for us, so I, I know he puts a lot of time and effort into the Dynasty Racing League, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have him here. I'm glad we found him. Um, and then Eric Weatherholtz for heading up that indie series we were just talking about. Hopefully that gets off the ground and will be a, a full-blown series for next season at the very least, and maybe towards the end of this yep. season it'll be a week-in, week-out thing that just happens. So um, I can't wait for next week, man. Michigan's going to be fun. Tonight was a great race. Uh, Martin, you got anything else for the viewers before I let them go here tonight? I'll just go off. Yeah, just go off that indie thing. I think the indie thing's kind of a, a kind of a both ways kind of thing. It's like more drivers will show up if they know the thing's going to be broadcasted, and they'll be broadcast if more drivers show up. So it's kind of like a you kind of have to work in tandem there. But yeah, yeah, show up. You know, come and watch the indie. I think. I mean, it looked really. The Indy 250 looked really cool on the screen. It looked really cool seeing those things zipping around the track. And uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try to get out on the track for the for the Canadian, you know, most sport uh, duels. But I'll have to definitely put in some more practice and yeah, if get I can put in a couple being hours, able, being able to get around the track, it's like I I can get around most of it. And then there's just this one turn where it's like every time, car just goes. <laughs> Right out from underneath me. No matter what I do, I can be going around at two miles per hour. And I, you know, hit the gas and boop, there you go. It's like, ah. Those but, things have a yeah, those are fun. To, they're fun to drive and they're, but it's just, yeah, it's it's a whole different thing and it's and again, it's a road so course quick. too. I mean, it's not even just, it's you know, you're going, you're. It's not like j- just jumping in the Indy car. I mean, going from the going from a you know the A car, the B car, the trucks here, and then jumping in the Indy car and doing an oval is a whole different thing and now you're going hey let's jump into that car and go on a road course and that's why you know hopefully some guys are gonna i mean i know there's a lot of guys in this league that that's all they do they're in this league to do indie and there's a couple guys i know like luke short who's doing both and you know, i think tater's gonna go over there and do some and maybe james will show up so hopefully we're gonna get more interest and we'll have another race and i think it's it's just more and more racing on DRL, and I think DRL racing is it's the cleanest racing you're going to find out there. No matter what we're racing, I think it's going to be good, clean, gentleman racing. Yeah, we and to, everyone's to... everyone's taking out everyone's taking out their crap right now in the boxing ring. I see like Daniel Hallis and John Theodore and uh, Jeffrey Meyer. Those guys were all over each other the whole race, and now they're taking it out on each other in the boxing ring on our Discord channel. So well, that's you know, kind of what you expect. That's how it works. Yep. <laughs> That's racing yeah, for you. Keep it in there. Brings out and the then best go out of there everyone, and right? Race, race your rival out on the track. I mean, there's, <laughs> I, I, I feel there are some rivalries out there. I mean, those, those three guys are definitely rivals at this point. Well, and thank we you. saw that. That was a yellow flag that came out there. So, yeah. Thanks for joining That's... me tonight, Martin. Can't wait <laughs> again for next week. Thanks to all of our viewers for showing up tonight. We will see you back next week, Tuesday night, 925 p.m. Eastern. Have a great night, everybody, and God bless. Yep, see ya.